Welcome to a new episode of or old if you're listening to this way later. Depends on, on you where you're yeah. at, what you're listening to. New to um, you, yeah. Old to us, new to you. Uh, episode of the new Rory and Mall podcast. I am Mall. I am Mall, and we are back, back home. Uh, we were on the road for what seemed like an eternity. Rory. I know, right? Uh, it seems like we were been around the world, and I, I, I. Yes, there wasn't a Hilton that we didn't conquer. Oh uh, yes, yes. Gotta love the old Hilton. The older <laughs> Hiltons, it, it, it humbles you. It it's some, you back something down to about that carpet. Yeah, <laughs> in those old Hilton yeah, hotels. It, just, it smelled like BMF. Uh, it smelled like <laughs> it definitely uh, did. Yeah, I could tell Meech had one of those rooms. Oh, back for in, sure. Back when he was running the muck in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, we were in Atlanta, then went down there to get some work done for, uh, the BT Hip Hop Awards weekend. Yes, we talked I'm to- I'm glad we got out of there before the, uh, the festivities ensued before the weekend. We talked with Benny, um, and I guess we could say we talked with Sahai. That's going to come out eventually. Eventually. I love eventually. Here's the thing. We just need some of this White Lives Matter shit to calm down before we, <laughs> we release our praising crazy. Kanye Sahai yeah. high episode. Yeah, we had to, we had to, we had to back. We read the room. We had to buckle down the hatches <laughs> a little bit. We had to, we had to get things, you know, settle in a little bit and let, let the smoke settle. Yes. Um, before we put Sahai the Saha episode out, but that was a great conversation we had with Saha. It was. I loved it. Can't Shout wait for the people to hear that one. Um, and then we also had a show in uh, in Charlotte. Yes, we did. Uh, shout out to the people in Charlotte. Shout out to, shout out to Black Fly on the Wall yeah, podcast. Great, great opener. And uh, shout out to Underground. It was the first time in that venue. I thought it was a really cool venue. Mm -hmm. Was mad we didn't get any of the popcorn they were making during meet and greet. Smelled great. Smelled really good. Smelled great. Uh, people told me that the drinks were $30 a pop. Jesus Christ. Yeah. In the South? Yeah. With inflation, that's like a hundred dollars a pop. Yeah, it's crazy. They're going crazy in the South right now with the thirty uh, dollars with the mixed drinks. Yeah, Moonshine. is Charlotte like a new trendy Austin, Texas type spot uh, in the South now? I, I blame Lamelo Ball. It's definitely it's all it's all Lamelo Ball's fault. Before it's he not, came, it's to not town. the baby's fault. No, no, no it's all Lamelo's fault. <laughs> the baby brought the price, the drink prices down. Down, yeah. Lamelo <laughs> brought him back up. Uh, it's all Lamelo Ball's fault. He got Charlotte going crazy, inflation everywhere. Uh, but uh, Charlotte showed a lot of love. Great yeah. show. And uh, we were there. I'm glad we uh, did. The full day in Charlotte before rather than an extra day in Atlanta. Yeah. Five years ago, I would have been like, let's stay in Atlanta and then go to Charlotte day of show. Yeah. I'm glad we got the calm rest. I got barbecue. Went out with Big Pooh. We, we hung out. Like it was, I actually got rest for the first time. I was mad that I did. At first, I didn't know it was homecoming. I uh, still when we got there. Had no idea. Uh, the guys from Black Fly on the Wall uh, let, let, let me know that it was homecoming, mm -hmm. even though uh, the weather was a little crazy uh, before we got in on a, on a Saturday. Yeah. Um, the weather was a little crazy, but you know, they said that pe people still went out Friday, mm -hmm. still had a good time. Um, so yeah. So next time I go down there, I got to check out, they should, they gave me a lot of vegan food options. Said I didn't know vegan food in Charlotte was uh, like thought on was, the rise. Thought it was all pork. I thought it was, I thought it <laughs> was just nothing but pork in Charlotte. From the Ruta to the Tudor. <laughs> I didn't even know they were on their vegan flow down there. So I got to get back down there, check out some of the vegan, uh, vegan, vegan spots. Um, uh, but great show. Did the show. Seen a lot of people that we speak to online. Uh, met a lot of cool people. Did you get good vegan food in Atlanta? And that, oh, Atlanta has great vegan food. Even though they stole yours when we first got there. Yeah, they stole my. I ordered some vegan food and had it delivered to the hotel. And <laughs> <laughs> so I ordered it right before. That's a good balance though, because like naturally when we think vegan, we think like, oh, you soft because you were vegan. But yeah. then you pair that with someone that's a thief. Yeah. <laughs> No, it, no, it, like, it, was, it, it kind of lit y'all no, level was, up a little bit. Was, People was, are stealing vegan food It was food the now. greatest thing because I ordered the food. Because we couldn't give it away before. Right. I ordered the food as soon as we landed. <laughs> so I figured, you know, by the time we get to the hotel, it'll be there. Yeah. I can go to my room, eat, shower, go to sleep. Mm -hmm. So we get to the hotel. So the, the the guy that delivers the food, he took a picture of it. He said, yeah, I left it right here on the table. Yeah, and sent it to table. his mans. Yeah, yeah, it's right there. <laughs> so we get there and um, somebody else's order, I think it was like, KFC or something was sitting there. Yeah, and that's something that you wouldn't take back. So I was like, yes, I was like, okay, this isn't my order. Mm. So I was like, so wait, they're stealing vegan food in Atlanta? Now? Yeah. Like, who steals vegan food? Like, I don't even think people like vegan food like that. But anyway, they stole my food, so I had to order something else. I ordered a pizza, something like that. I went to sleep. Um, he was livid. Because you know when you're hungry and then, like, you know the <laughs> food is there. Like, yeah, yes, I can't wait to. You timed so, it right? Yeah, the, the timing was perfect. They took a little long with our luggage. They had us waiting at one carousel for mm -hmm. 20 minutes. And then they was like, no, they're down there. Go down there. My homeboy picked us up from the airport. Shout out to my, my, my homeboy T. So I'm like, yeah, I'm in the car. We talking. I'm like, yeah, I'm just thinking about this food. I'm hungry, tired. We caught the last flight out to Atlanta at like 930. Mm. Um, but yeah, they stole my vegan food. So I had to resort to uh, <laughs> vegan pizza for the night. And um, that was it. But Charlotte was great. You went out, I heard. 
We went out after the Charlotte show. I wanted to see because I had I had never been to a club in Charlotte, mm-hmm. so I wanted to see. I heard you guys painted the town. Actually, what, I've been to a club in Charlotte. Oh, no, we didn't paint the town. They told me you and Julian painted the town. I've Yuck. been to a club in Charlotte, but it was years ago for CIAA weekend. I don't think that counts because it's a weekend. Gotcha. I wanted to see what like a calm Sunday. It was my first time in the city of Charlotte. I've been to the airport countless times for connecting yeah. flights when I was poor. Yeah. That Charlotte is a big hub for connecting <laughs> flights when you take that last economy seat right. uh, five minutes before you're supposed to leave. Yeah. So I know Charlotte Airport very well. Yeah. <laughs> it's my so, spot. So we went to, uh, I forgot the name of the first spot, Julian. I, cloud Nine, I believe you guys said it was. That was no, the last cloud, spot. Cloud, cloud, uh, cloud was the second spot we went to. Okay. That the was the Afties. Spot, yeah. The first exactly. Afties in Charlotte is nuts. <laughs> nice. yeah. yeah. So the first spot that we went to, uh, it closed at like 1230. We got there like 12. Yeah. Got a little, little 30 minutes in. Uh-huh. And as soon as we walked in, Women just flocking. No, oh. it was you could just feel just you knew that you were in North Carolina. I hated every it was of like that. no one was patted down. No, no, they patted no, no, you was patted down, they patted us down, but it just was but it like, didn't matter if they patted a gun, it was fine. Yeah, yeah. no, they patted good. you down, it's they didn't take anything. Good. Though. It was like, yo, you knew where you were at. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of Jew. see yeah, the yeah. south, they still on that. Just like so shiny. Oh, for it's sure. Like the Geechee shit. Yeah, like yeah, they yeah, gonna yeah, put yeah. everything on. Whatever yep. they got, whatever they brought, they win it all yeah. in the club. They have not uh, caught up to the choker chain yet. Yeah, no, 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 no. They need to, everything <laughs> that, that's just bust down. To their down. Knees. They need to bust down everything. Bust down chain, bust yeah. down watches, bust mm-hmm. down sneakers. They still yep. wear the sneakers with the sparkly shit on it. So I was like, all right, we in Charlotte. So but you know, the music, I wanted to get a vibe of the music. I said, okay, playing a lot of boosie. Okay. Um, you know, I was that like, makes okay. sense. Yeah, so I was like, okay, I see the vibe. So then they told us they was like, yo, it's another spot. After this, that everybody's going to. Mm-hmm. So I was like, "Where else?" Like, you guys do the bottles, sparkler. Like, I bought you, a bo- I bought a bottle for the for the table. Did you represent was, uh, for us? Did you make us look good? Yeah, yeah. It was okay. a, it was a bottle for the table that we were uh, basically like sitting with. So I was like, "Yeah, to get a bottle of tequila, or whatever." At Rep- any point, did the DJ say, "Yo, Mall's in the building"? No, <laughs> oh, my God, no, no. Because I hate when I'm not supposed to be no, in the no, building no, no, and the no. DJ said, like, "I'm I'm cheating right no, now. I Stop was, it." I was a visitor. <laughs> I was a I'm humble joking, visitor. I was strictly a humble visitor that night. Then we went to the second spot. And um, I kind of like the fact that we had a little issue getting in. Like, it kind of, like, brought me back to a time. Oh, okay. Where back I to you. I had yeah. to have conversations to get in the spot. Yeah, back to the Hilton uh, Hotel floors. Exactly. <laughs> it was a humbling experience. Even so, the car experience was brutal. Yeah, the, oh, the, the car. Wait for Because in the South, everybody drives. So, mm. imagine, so what I did was I called an Uber. We had an SUV when we left the venue. Okay. So, you know, I'm, I'm, as soon as we, me and Julian pull in, I'm peeping the scene. I'm like, let me ask this driver if he'll turn off the app and I'll just pay him hourly. So I asked him, I said, yo, how much do you charge Good hourly? Move. Good move. He said $70. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay. Not bad. I said, turn the app off. Wait for me. Because I knew the spot was closing in 30 minutes. We were going to leave. Yeah. So I said, yo, wait for me. And then, you know what I'm saying? You could take us back, whatever, to the, to the hotel. Half up front? Are we no up front? No, 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 okay. no. So he, he was like, was first he was with it. Mm-hmm. And then he was like. Skated with your $35. Then he was like, uh. <laughs> he's like, you know what? I got to get up early in the morning. I said, all right, fam, no problem. Like, I get it. You know what I mean? It's mm. like, it's the South. He had probably never even been approached with that before. For sure. At that time of he night, at, 12 o'clock midnight, he's like. He had already been in church. He had been in church for six hours already. Exactly. So I'm like, you know what? I'm like, all right, cool. But I only did that because I know in the South how hard it can be getting an Uber late at night. Mm-hmm. Very Everybody difficult. drives. So mm-hmm. it's like, there's no need for Ubers to be on the road. So we're getting in it. We're getting the club. Cool night, whatever. So I see that everybody's about this wrapping up. Mm-hmm. I call the Uber. I'm like, all right, let me get ahead of well, this uh, thing. Uh, well, let's not get ahead of... What was Julian's like club swag like? Oh, no, nah, Julian was chilling. Okay. He was I, chilling. I've, I've never done the club. Actually, I want to know what the Julian, club swag yo, listen, is. Listen, actually, me and Julian were both on the same shit. They had a bunch of screens playing highlights from all the games okay. on Sunday. Oh, me okay. and Julian were standing there looking at the fucking yeah. highlights. Like, we wasn't even really like partying, if you want to call it partying. A little but, bit of tequila. Chilling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We was just you. chilling, watching the TV, watching the screens. A um, few LOLs with some women or what? LOLs. Nah, it, we no, didn't no. even really. Uh, just besides the girls that was at the table we was at, like mm. we said hello, and then that, you know, that pretty much was it. But, um, so I, I called the Uber to get ahead of yeah. having to wait. Sure enough, no Uber XLs, or no Uber SUVs available. Oh, I thought dude that said he was going home was about to pick y'all up. <laughs> no, <laughs> like, you piece no, of shit. It wasn't even available. So then we had to go down to Uber, the regular Uber. Cool. Oh, felt like 18 a peasant. minutes. Ooh, damn. Said, oh, God damn, we got to play the parking lot for 18. Now, if you've yeah. ever been in the South, playing the parking lot for 18 minutes, anything could happen. It I can be it. a shootout. Mm-hmm. It can be, you know, a fight. You know, it can, all kind of shit. So Pregnancy. Like, right, so anything can happen. <laughs> so we wait in the parking lot. Car pulls up. We finally find the car. Get to the next spot. Now the spot that we went to was called um, Cloud. Cloud. So Uber pulls up. We get to Cloud, and I'm seeing that they're giving uh, 
the, the ladies a hard time getting in. So I'm like, okay. So now <laughs> so you swooped right in. So now my people's yo, yo, that yo, yo, they with us. Yeah, no, no. Look, who so are my, you? My people's that my people's <laughs> that went with us. Yeah. Her and her brother walks in and she says, yo, give me one second. You know the one second. Oh, I'm I hate like, oh, the one second. Oh, yeah. I'm about to be out here for a minute. Yep. But 100%. I'm like, yo, you know what? I haven't felt this in a while. Mm. So let me see if I still what's, know how what's to. What's worse? The one second or the name of the person you have no idea that you have to say, yo, oh, no, no, yo no, no, ask no. for Chad. Don't, like, yo, they told me to ask nah, for Chad. Don't ever do yo, that. we don't know nobody named don't, Chad. Don't ever tell me to ask for somebody. Like, if I'm going with you, I expect for you to already have everything. Walk me right in. She turns and looks at me. She says, one second. I'm like, okay, no problem. Mm. Truth be told, the <laughs> only reason I even wanted to go to this spot is because we could smoke. Yeah. So I was like, all right, cool. Okay. We could smoke. Like, I'm good. Okay. I don't uh, drink. Okay. I was like, cool. I can go ahead and smoke, listen to music. The bouncers are telling the females it's $100 to get in. I said, oh, shit. What time did it close? The mall turned around. 10 minutes after? No, that's, that spot closed at like 2.30. It was okay. like 12.45. All right. I was like, oh, shit. They telling women to pay $100? Yeah. I had never heard no shit like so that you, before. So you slipped a couple... Couple honey, no, never in, that. In person. Definitely not doing that. <laughs> Said, "Yo, it's on Jamil tonight." So I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, wait, y'all charging the women a hundred dollars to get in? I can understand mm. charging the fellas. I agree. I'm like the women. So now the women are mad. They cursing the dude. They like, we come in all the time. It's never hundred dollars. All of a sudden tonight, it's a hundred dollars. So I'm sitting there. there. I'm looking at Julian like, yo, this is great. I'm, I'm laughing so hard because <laughs> I have not experienced this type of thing in so long. I'm like, oh, this is this is still a thing. You still yeah. have to have a hassle with the bouncer to get in. Cool. Standing there, whatever, whatever. My friend comes back to the door with the, one of the promoters. He gives us like uh, like four passes. It was five of us. It was no, four of us. <laughs> gives us three passes. Mm. So I'm like, okay, no problem. I'll pay the 100 for, uh, what's her name, Victoria? The Victoria. photographer we had for yeah. the show. Oh, yeah, she yeah. Met us there. I said, oh, $100. I'm looking at it like it's really $25 for all of us to get in. Yeah. No problem. Paid 100 She didn't want me to pay it. She's like, nah, fuck that. We not. I said, no, no, no. We're going to pay it just because I want to see. Perspective. Yes. I want to see what Charlotte parties like. I just wanted to see mm-hmm. what Charlotte does on the Sunday. We get inside. It's a whole different energy in there. The niggas is in there. I hated it. The <laughs> niggas is in there. Oh, the drug dealers, the gang. Oh, we was in treacherous territory. Treacherous so I looked at Julian because yeah. I'm like, all right, it's just me and Julian, yeah. really. So I'm like, behind enemy lines. Yeah. So I'm like, all right. So Julian, he he got his poker face on. I'm like, all right, yeah. cool. He looked like he slicked his head back yeah, a little yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, Julian, yeah. like you ready for they, business? They, they don't know if he's a crazy yeah. Arab or what. They don't know what he is. <laughs> they don't know yeah. it. No, like, I, I like I like what you yeah. try to do there, Julian. Yeah, they like, keep him yeah. guessing. Like he could be crazy. He could be crazy. So I'm like. All right, cool. We in there. I kept my hood on the whole time. I'm smoking whatever. I right? also have my hood on. Yeah. So here's the funniest part about the whole night, Rory. I started- so you just wanted to make the robbing energy worse than this. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no so friendly energy. You got to keep the hood on to let them know, like, you don't know what's under here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, so don't leave me alone. I'm over, I'm in the cut. I'm smoking. I'm not bothering nobody. Yeah. I look like the crazy dude in the club that night, right? So here a bunch the- of hooded men inside, all the pretty women outside. This sounds like a recipe for fucking. Oh, it, it, was it was crazy. It was crazy. Here's the best part of the night for me. This is why I know I'm crazy. Mm. I started survival. Oh. I started getting bumped. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like dudes were like, "Yo, part." Like, excuse me. Like they didn't want me standing next to the. T- I'm like, "Oh shit, I'm the weird nigga in the club. Nobody knows me." Because I've done yo, that. Who? Because I've done that. I've been at the club and we standing there at our table and we were like, "Yo, who homie? Like who he I'm with?" About, I was about to say you was the he with you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was the he's with you guy. So I was like, oh shit. And now I'm under the hoodie laughing because I'm like, I already know what I look like to these yeah, dudes yeah, yeah. because I've seen this guy before next mm-hmm. to my table. Like, yo, who yeah. he with? None of the girls know. And then none of the dudes know. So they was like, yo, pardon me, fam. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. In reality, I was a little too close you, to their table. He was fucking up the aesthetic. But here's the funny part. The only reason I was that close to the table is because one of the homies asked to use my lighter. So I'm like, fam, I don't even want to be standing over here. Oh, but now, now I'm getting bumped. People nah. are telling me to move. I'm like, yo, this is great. 30 minutes of that, I said, you know what? I've had enough. I'm out of here. As soon as we leave, my homegirl texts me like, yo, so glad y'all left. The baby just got was in here. Some dude tried to punch him in his face. Security knocked the dude out. I'm in the hotel laying down like, I'm so glad me and Julian walked out of there when we did. Because if I would have saw that... because. Typically, the one that's hanging by the section is the one that gets knocked out. Absolutely. So, so that could have been you laid out. Oh no, it could it, it could have gotten bad. It could have gotten bad. The energy I could you could when you've been in the clubs long enough, you know when the energy is tense. Oh, for when sure. the, when the dudes is looking at you a little like yo, who is this? It's that's what Phil Collins really was talking about. Yeah. He could feel it in the air. I could feel it in the air. Danger was approaching. It was imminent. It was on the rise. I say, yo, Julian, we out of here. Called the Uber. Got back to the hotel. 
Great night, Charlotte. Uh, I listen. I gotta get back. I gotta go back to Cloud. You, you said gotta go great back. night like that. No, <laughs> I mean <laughs> nothing about it was good. It ended chill. You know, that's a good night. I forgot we, to mention the other line to get into Cloud was forty dollars. That was the oh, oh two lines. Oh, they had an easy pass. Yo, <laughs> no, but look, but look, <laughs> that line. Mm-hmm. It, so it was the hundred dollar line. Okay, and then it was the forty dollar. The forty dollar line I was respect the business. GA. Forty dollars of GA. That was GA line. Yeah. The hundred dollar line. You could yeah. walk into the VIP. Hundred puts you next to the. Yeah, to but be the weird walk, guy next to the- exactly. <laughs> you could walk into the VIP section, but you got to buy a table. But so it's just, like, wait, so y'all standing letting, in the walkway? Yeah, like so y'all just letting dudes walk into the VIP section and just stand around? Yeah, remember homie took our passes back too. <laughs> They gave us ro- rolling cloud passes, like the oh, all man, access passes. As mm-hmm. soon as we got to VIP. All access to cloud is fucking Look, hilarious. As soon as we got to the VIP section, they took the laminates off of it. I said, so what, y'all recycling laminates? They laminate? snatched your chains? <laughs> I was like, yo. Literally, he took it off her head. They fleeced y'all? Need, left, man, left y'all butt no, naked in the club? what I'm saying. He took it off of me. Like, I didn't take it off. I was like, I got punked the whole night. It was your, your unchaining Yo, look, day? Listen, that was the that was the most humbling, but like, I needed to feel that experience. Yeah. I've been spoiled too long. I've been, you know, had access too long. Yeah. I felt like the regular guy in GA. You had to hunt was, for your food. I was, the, I was the weirdo. I was the floater. Mm. I was the floater in the club. Nobody knew me. Ooh, they couldn't even see my face. I had a hood. I had a jacket with a hood on it. Smoking okay. weed under a hood. Okay. I was the weirdo, but I loved every second of it. I needed to feel that energy. Shout out to Charlotte, North Carolina. Yeah. I'm definitely going back. I, I, this time, niggas ain't bumping me, though. <laughs> come, come no, no, no. Friends. Niggas ain't bumping. I'm getting my own table. Niggas ain't bumping me. I'm not doing that. We're you doing, doing the that. bumping? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excuse me. Pardon me, the baby. I know this is Listen, your city. Watch out. Say what you will about the baby. Not my place to say. I think he's undefeated. No, the baby is, uh, if you look at his track record, Rory, he's, uh, he's not to be played with. And he's not one of those prize fighters that like fights once every five years and maybe someone out of their prime. He fights weekly. No, he gets back in the and ring I quick. I think he's undefeated. Yeah, his turnaround time is, uh, is amazing. He doesn't give a fuck. He he's doesn't need, never lost. He's not in training camp very long. Like he's ready to go whenever y'all ready to go. And like even like his whole camp too is undefeated. Yeah, absolutely. No, he has a security guard. I think that his name is... Kane or Kong? Of course it's Kane. That's any, yeah. Like Kong? I mean, <laughs> King, mo- King Kong. No, the Punisher. This motherfucker is so big. Listen, man. They put him on a helicopter. I seen the video. They was getting on the helicopter. This nigga needed his own helicopter. It was like King Kong at the top of the Empire State Building and they had just captured him and threw him in a helicopter to take him to the fucking jungles of <laughs> Brazil baby, or something. Maybe he just hop on his back. <laughs> yo, this motherfucker is huge. I'm like, Let's yo, dog. Like, I would, how, the fact that somebody would actually try to pop on the baby with that dude standing behind him. You got a lot I'm of not, balls, bro. I'm not popping on him. No. Yuck. His security, no, 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 his no, no, friends, no. the city of Charlotte. No, that's, <laughs> a, that's a big dude. That's well, a I'm, big glad, dude. I'm glad you guys got that experience after the whole story we experience. had on our show. Great experience. Yeah. Great the, experience. the Charlotte show definitely confirmed. I just had a conversation at Dreamville Fest with residents of North Carolina that the South, y'all just marry quicker. Mm-hmm. Like marriage is a real thing oh, as opposed to up North. The, so name of the, show, the, the name of the first club we went to was called Stats. That was the name of the club. Like statistics, we but stats? Wait, why'd Damaris just go crazy? You've been to Stats? Yeah, Damaris been to Stats. I didn't even know you've been to Charlotte. And yeah, now you know Stats. 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 <laughs> stats was the name of the spot. Shout out to Stats. Shout out to the people that work there. Shout out to the beautiful waitresses. The DJ was great. Uh, great night. I'm um, glad we got out of there with no no altercations. And, um, yeah. But we going back to Cloud, man. Niggas ain't bumping me no oh, more Oh, Damaris, <laughs> I got you a gift in Atlanta. Yeah. It's at the top some, of the fridge. Bought you some condoms. Uh, <laughs> bought you some dental dam. Uh, <laughs> watch you some baby oil. What is a dental dam? It's saran wrap for the pussy. Right? Oh, look at baby D. Baby D, I love your hair. Looking like Annie. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, we we're thinking about you in Atlanta. Vintage we were thinking spot. about you. We thought what would look good on baby D when she want to let the girls out uh, next summer. Nice little Janet Jackson vintage live in concert T-shirt. Yeah, I believe that was a bootleg. That's the one that Martin was uh, trying to sell <laughs> for the Whitty Hutton concert on a uh, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> the believe, price it better not be. Yeah, I believe that's the same one. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm glad you guys got that experience. Yeah, shout out was, to Charlotte. It was a great time, man. Too much loyalty time. on stage for for my liking, but it was still a fun show. But great, I get it. In the show. South, y'all married at great fucking 21 sh- yeah, years old. Great show. It's a different environment. Different environment, but the people came out, showed a lot of love. So thank you to Charlotte. We will be back soon. We got to go back down there and check on them. Yeah, I, I had a lot of fun. We might have to just do like a whole North Carolina run. Yeah. Greensboro, I'm with Durham, that. Charlotte. Because they was asking us, why y'all didn't come to Raleigh? Why y'all didn't come to Greensboro? We like, oh, we figured Charlotte was central. I, I didn't know, know uh, Fayetteville had the J. Cole stain on it the way that they introduced oh, yeah. themselves. Yeah. Like, they'd be like, oh, yeah, I'm from Fayetteville. I, I know. I like J. Cole. It's like, I wasn't even thinking I didn't, that. I sir. wasn't going to even go there, but. <laughs> I had no idea. We understand why. He's the, obviously the biggest 
name out of Fayetteville. So, but yes, again, shout out to them. We're in uh, we're in London next. London, yes. November fifth. We're at the Earth Theater. Um, if any of you bloats want to come yes. out and uh, kick it with us. Nando's with the foggy bloats. Yeah. Uh, no? I don't know what you just said. But yeah, come on out November 5th. <laughs> you don't Earth, to to, is it Earth Theater. You don't want to go to Nando's with a foggy bloke? Nah, I can't eat nothing. I can't even eat Nando's. I can't eat Nando's no more. They must have some vegan Yeah, fries, sauce. You right? can just have the sauce. Just the rice. The fries. sauce. Just the rice, sauce. Yeah. No, no, not doing Nando's. They have they have all good vegan food in, um, in London, I'm being told, though. They have good vegan. Let's hope so. So I'm looking forward to it. I mean, they're they're known to have very bland food, so I would imagine vegan yeah. would be pretty Beans. vegan. Vegan? Why do y'all keep thinking vegan food is bland? I'm joking. Vegan I'm is okay. great. Y'all gotta try tofu. Huh? <laughs> Isn't that Toronto? <laughs> Isn't I don't know. November fifth, Earth Theater, in London. Uh, get your tickets now. Coming out there to kick it with y'all for a few days. Mate. Uh, I'm definitely looking forward to that one. They've been trying to get us across the water for a couple years, so. Uh, they say across the pond. That's oh, excuse say. me, across, across the, the pond. pond. It'll be my first time in London. Okay, good. So we gotta definitely take yeah. the streets up a little bit. I'm I'm packing all my trenches. Yeah. <laughs> they wear trench coats out there, right? Oh, absolutely. Cool. Jack the Ripper, ever heard of him? No? Okay, cool. Uh <laughs> trench coat mafia? No, yeah. too soon. <laughs> too soon. Uh, uh get your tickets now, November 5th, November 5th, Earth Theater in London. Ooh. Uh the BT uh, Hip Hop Awards were going on while we were in Atlanta. While we were in Atlanta, the BT Hip Hop Awards were happening. We sat down with uh Benny, who was nominated for Lyricist of the Year. Congrats to him on his nomination. Uh Kendrick Lamar ended up winning that, which I'm not mad at. I mean, yeah. it kind of felt like Kendrick was gonna win that anyway. Uh, Kendrick actually won a lot. He won a hip hop album of the year. He won a hip hop artist of the year. Uh, he won lyricist of the year. He won video director of the year. Him and Dave Free. Uh, yeah. So Kendrick cleaned up. Was he? I don't, he wasn't there. I was about to say. I don't, well, he was doing SNL. I think. Uh, That's yeah. probably why he won and best hip hop video. Him, Family Size, Baby Keem, and Kendrick. Uh, so yeah, it was a Kendrick Lamar weekend in Atlanta. Even though he wasn't there, uh, I wasn't mad at a lot of the other winners. Uh, shout out to DJ Drama. Uh, he won DJ of the year. Our guy Drama, Ooh. shout out to our, our guy Hitmaker. He won well, uh, Producer of the Year. What well, well deserved for Drama winning DJ of the Year. I just thought his speech was funny because he said, "Back when I was a DJ and won DJ of the, of the Year." Yeah, yeah. And Joe Biden's on the TV again. He will just not leave us alone. You've yeah. been on mute. Um. So yeah, it was. A, it was a. Did you watch the awards? I caught some of it. Um. Actually, I caught most of it because I just wanted to see what the awards look like now. And I'm, I will say this: the. Uh, the BT Hip Hop Awards, it's 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 time to put more uh more creative people into it. Elaborate. It's uh it kind of just feels like a high school talent show with like okay a little bit of a big production for like like pyro. Really? Pyro. Yeah. How so though? Because I did see some people saying bad things about it, and I had asked what they would change. I thought it was a good show for nah. for what you could do with the Hip Hop Awards. I feel like they covered. All ends of of hip hop in 2022. It's your trap shit, your lyrical shit, your woke shit, your non woke shit. Like I think they cover the basis of hip hop right now. Uh, I don't know. It, it just feels like it, it, it's not as much put into it as the BET Awards, and I'm, and hip hop being the, the biggest influence on the culture mm. um, on the planet. It, I just feel like it, sh- it should be more put into the BT hip hop. Oh well, I agree. I, I do think it still the hip hop like awards the should be a bigger experience. I do agree there. I'm saying just as far as like. The performances, the categories, the talent they picked, I thought they did well in that regards. Now, I do agree with you, but again, that comes to budgeting and, and advertisers, and if they really want to advertise around hip-hop, that would make this a bigger I mean, experience. they advertise around hip-hop anyway. Hip-hop pushes everything on the planet, so. Well, advertisers pick and choose. Uh, they treat hip-hop like a buffet. It's the largest genre ever, but advertisers pick and choose what type of hip-hop they want to be around. <laughs> well, the bottom line is this award show needs to step up uh, and and produce a a great show, not just an okay show. They need to produce a great show. Um, but they did get for the most part most of the categories. In my opinion, they got it right. I feel like Kodak should have won Song of the Year. I agree with uh Super Gremlin. Uh, shout out to Lotto though. Her song did is doing extremely well. I don't want to make it seem like we're not uh you know happy that Lotto got. It. I'm not mad that Lotto got it, but I thought that Kodak was gonna win that. Um, and then Kodak has something to say about it. He tweeted. He said uh, the women empowerment shit is cool. Uh, don't take nothing from nobody, but you still got to work for it. Don't just simply give it to somebody because they're a woman. Uh, if that's the case, y'all should have gave Song of the Year to Gl- Glorilla. Now, this last line, I'm not sure where this energy came from uh, with 
not that hating ass mutt. I don't know the history between uh, Kodak and Lotto, if they have a beef, if they have something going on. If It started, I, uh, I think it started Breakfast Club when Lotto was on there suggesting that there was a male artist that she was trying to work with, but all he wanted to do was fuck. And then the fans decided that it was Kodak. She never said it was Kodak, but you know, rappers look oh. at their mentions and just assume. Oh, uh, yeah. Fan, not, fans will make a rapper think something. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to feed into that too much. I didn't understand that last line. That's Kodak. the only history I know that that could be connected to it. There could be something else. But yeah, that last line. I do like the fact that Kodak's performance, uh, he did start with a tribute to P&B Rock mm. after he had you know made some comments about uh, his girl, his, uh, his, his baby's mother right when it happened, blaming her for his, uh, his death and um, saying some things that just wasn't right online I, I and he did go on to apologize about that and i was happy to see that he same paid a tribute to pnb rock uh before his his performance uh, uh but shit cl- clips we got pushing malice back together we did um it was, to see that. It was amazing to see armani white do his his record and then bring nori, nori out yep. like it's it great to see that's armani drink champs win well co-win best hip-hop platform and also to see nori rap like that i warmed my my 1990 heart. <laughs> shout out to Nori. Shout out to DJ EFN. Uh, shout out to Drink Champs. Uh, well, well deserved, I well, think. Well deserved. <sighs> We're going to sound like we hating, but nah. I promise it's not coming from a hating place. Listen, it's coming l- from a statistics place. Listen, I like... I Carisha, like- <laughs> please, should not have co one best hip-hop platform. That's not offensive to me. It's no. offensive to Drink Champs in the fucking seven years of work and legendary moments they've done compared to four episodes. This goes back no to, Cohen. <laughs> this goes back to what I believe Kodak was trying to say in his tweet. With the women empowerment uh, movement, like we support it. We support women. We want them to do great. We want them to be, you know, give 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 them their flowers. But but, but there's some mis- misogyny in there. Yeah, but Carisha, <laughs> please listen. I like Young Miami. I think that she's a. Uh, I think that show is phenomenal. I think it has her so much personality potential. is great. I think that you know she she I think she has something with this Carisha, please. But they're only six episodes in, um, so to call it best hip hop platform and put it next to Drink Champs, it's just I think it's like, offensive on, to man. Drink Champs. Like we, we listen, I'm I'm with the women empowerment shit. I'm I'm with it. I support it. I want women to do well. But to give a tie for best hip hop platform with Carisha Please and Drink Champs, mm. come on, fam. Like we, what are we doing? You know what I mean? Like I think it's a little disrespectful to Nori. It's a little dis- disrespectful to G- DJ EFN and what they've been doing over there for years. Um, but, you know, I was happy that Nori and, and EFN went up there and accepted the award. Nori said he doesn't go to awards because he doesn't never win. Um, this was his first time going in over like 15, 20 years, maybe. He said the last time he went to an award show, he was with Big Pun. I think. He, oh, yeah, he was with Big wow. Pun. So that was definitely like 20 years at least. Um, so, yeah, man, it was just it was just good to see Nori uh, win his award. Um, and again, shout out to Carisha, please. But come on, they six episodes in, man. Like we can't. Again, I think it's what are we doing. Great show and will be great. It's yeah, just you can't not, call it, if the best hip hop platform has six episodes in, like next to one that's been working for yeah, five plus years and yeah. has countless legendary moments and in interviews and yeah. has pushed the hip hop platforms forward. Not only business but culturally. I don't want to get started because. I just feel like no, drink no, no champs, I get it. It's, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's a, it was a little offensive to to drink champs. Is all I'm saying. But I mean, they're both the, revolt, you know. So yeah, and it, and it's something else too. That why we do you think she got about. it, Maul? Why do I think she got it? Yeah, yeah. why do you think she got I it? I mean, Maul? you know, I think Puff made a call. Mm-hmm. Who do you call? I think Puff made a call and say, "Hey, listen, man, this will really help." You know, with the platform, this will really help. You know, what I'm saying, get my baby girl a coat. She ain't gonna be there, but was she there? No, she was there. I have no idea. I think she was there. I think I saw pictures of of her there. Was it? I don't know. A lot if of these... she got that award and didn't show up, that's even funnier. That's even hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> I think she was. She might not. She may not have been there. Uh, she may not have been there. But in, in, anyway, I, we know that it, Puff made a call to BET and was like, "Listen, this a it's a help, you know, with the platform building it." Um, so it is what it is. We know BET and Revolt are mm-hmm. in business together. But they're, shout out they're, to they're uh, kissing cousins. For yeah, sure. shout out to the Drink Champs. Uh, shout out to Glorilla. I thought her performance was great. Yeah, for somebody who's first time, you know, performing at. The BET Hip Hop Awards. I thought her her show was her set was really dope. Uh, she had girls in the audience shaking ass, girls on stage, um, and she looked good. So shout out to Glorilla. Shout out to uh, ESTG and uh, and Jeezy too. I thought their set was dope. About, uh, it was good to see the, Jeezy uh, performing with uh, EST, kind of passing the torch, yeah. if you will, Rory. No, no, I enjoyed that as well. Um, the loud tribute, Steve Rifkin. 
That was I, dope. I was standing on this couch. Yeah. That, I thought that loud tribute was you? phenomenal. What? It was a great. It was great. My childhood. The best performance of the night went to Joey Badass, though. I thought Joey Badass's performance was uh it was it was powerful. The message was dope. I think having all of the names of, you know, the artists that passed away in hip hop on the back of the hoodies. I thought that was dope. You know, just just paying respect. And then the message again behind it was dope. Like, yo, we gotta stop blaming everybody else. It's, you know, it's us. Like we gotta stop killing each other. We gotta stop bringing violence and negative energy towards each other. We gotta start taking accountability for what's going on in our neighborhoods and our communities. So shout out to Joey Badass. I thought that was super dope to use the BT Hip Hop Awards platform to send. What was the significance message. of the numbers? I was trying to figure that out. Um, I'm not sure what the significance of the numbers were. I started to feel like I was stupid because I didn't catch it. Yeah, I, I don't know what the significance of the um, of the numbers on the back of the jerseys. And it's were. fine; you can be mean to me in my mentions, like how the fuck you're so stupid, you didn't realize these. I don't know. Meant. Either, I'm sure so. I'll get those tweets, but thank you. I just need. I wanted to know what they meant because I thought the performance was was incredible. Yeah. Uh, DNA versus Kayshawn. Again, I thought that was dope. They added that to an award show. One round smack. I thought it was hilarious that they already had DNA as the winner in the envelope before the battle. But <laughs> Smack opened up the envelope and it just had DNA's I'm, I'm, name. I'm sure they had I'm sure they had two envelopes. But <laughs> I saw one uh, yeah. in Smack's hand. Um I don't know how I feel about that. I think it's a little I think it's a little corny. I'm Why? happy I'm happy that Battle Rap got that platform and you know people saw that, but it was a. Uh, it just it's it's not what it's not what we know as battle rap. It just seems like something that's kind of like just a sideshow. Yeah, it felt a little sideshowish. Um, and battle rap is way too big of a platform. DNA and Kayshawn are, are two of the, the the best in battle rap. So I just felt like it was just a little bit of a, you know, you want to go get a drink. Now's the time type of performance. I guess. I mean, I love that they highlighted it though because whether it be on the internet or just the beginnings of hip hop, battle rap is is the embodiment of hip-hop. So how could you not include it in a hip-hop awards for a round? Like, I thought that was dope. And I, I hate when battle rap fans get upset when battle rap, quote-unquote, goes mainstream, if you consider this mainstream. Like, you just want battle rap to be in a box for the rest of its life? Like, it can't grow not and in a, get to a bigger stage? Not in a box, but uh, we got to keep it. Though I will say, I'm sure battle, battle rap. rap gets way more views than the BET Hip Hop. Oh yeah, so I don't want to put yeah, it that so way. That's By we, mainstream, I don't mean views. No, battle I mean, rap Battle rap is, is, a, is a huge platform. We know that. We support it. Um... But I just felt like, you know, to put it in the mis- middle of the show like this, mm. it just, it wasn't a lot of thought put into it. It just seemed like something real quick. Hey, let's just have them battle 90 seconds and then we'll pick a, let the audience cheer and pick a winner. I, yeah. I don't know. I just didn't, I don't really like, like I said, I think it just needs to be produced a little better. Yeah. That's all. I'm not mad at them incorporating that maybe into the ciphers type of thing. I feel if they want to do that, you know what I mean? Like have people battle within the cipher type of environment, but that on stage, it felt it felt like you know just a little. It wasn't much thought put into. I it. I just love the crowd during the the battle rap of the sync of not really listening, but just going ooh at the end of every line, even if it was a part they weren't supposed to ooh at. Yeah, <laughs> that's ooh oh. But shout oh. out to DNA and Kayshawn. <laughs> shout out to Smack. Like that, no, that wasn't the part to ooh at. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Smack. Um. But yeah, the, the BT, it, it was cool. But again, I think it just needs to be better produced. Uh, Cyphers, so, and we, we can get off it. What you thought of Cyphers? I mean, that was my complaint going in that I feel like they need to go back to the moments that the Cyphers used to be. Um, but I yeah. do think the young kids did, did well. It just wasn't the moment that they it used to be. It was a couple of them that were cool. I thought to- Topaz Jones was great. I thought Ray Vaughn from TDE was great. Ruben Vincent was great. Uh, Baby Tate was great. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure there's people I'm forgetting off the top of my head that that were good, but that that first cipher I think was was probably one of the better ones. Um, and then what was the one Envy was doing with Meek Mill's baby mother and Regina Carter? Like that was that a separate cipher? I didn't see that. I'm I just... didn't see it either, and maybe I missed it. I just saw the clips online, and I saw Meek saying, "Why would you put my baby mother in that cube and make her rap?" <laughs> Yo. Like, why would you do that to the? This is what I'm saying. To my like, child's mother. It's just like, what's going? On? Like, I I understand wanting to try different things and incorporate different things into the show, but we got to think these things through just a little bit more. This is the BET Hip Hop Awards. Like, it got to mm. be a certain level of integrity, a certain level of artistry that's still maintained at all times. Like, I don't, you know, trying new things is cool, but we can't try, be try them in your house first. 
Yeah, like yeah. Let, <laughs> let's try. Let's try it on let's, another let's level. Let's try it first. at home privately. Yeah, and then maybe we, we'll get before we put it out there like that. Like it's just so. Meek says I don't like BET. <laughs> got my baby mom trying to spit bars for attention clout. It's like a setup embarrassment made to look like opportunity. And I'm with the women hustle empowerment motion. Like we all are, but y'all drawing. This is pure <laughs> manipulation. <laughs> so you're saying she can't rap? I'm laughing at every man, including us, where we have to start with, yo, we with that women empowerment nah, shit. We, cause but this we, is awful. Because listen, women are talented, women are dope. Like we support We it. don't need to say that. We yeah, already know that. Right. But 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 it's like this, but anytime we want to say something, yo, I think women are great. Yeah. But <laughs> but this is this is like what is this? Stop making my baby mother rap. Yeah, like this is I I didn't even know Meek's baby you're, mom's rap. You're not empowering. I don't think she does. I don't think she does either. So, oh, all right. So I got more questions. So this <laughs> this is not like gonna this is not like gonna like parlay into something else. Parlay. <laughs> this is not no, she's not gonna put out nightmares and dreams. <laughs> oh my god. Wait. So she doesn't make music at all. Uh, I don't know. I don't think so though. I'm just going to guess. I have no information. This is me assuming. If Meek is saying this, she better not make music. But who is bringing that to the table? Like, yo, I heard, you know, Meek has a baby mother. <laughs> yeah, Meek has kids. We, yes, we know that. Yes. So, like, maybe we should get one of them to rap? Yeah. I no, don't... she might be an artist. I don't know. I don't know. And that's, right, well, my wait, pure, that's my pure ignorance, not fault no, of her. I, believe I just a, don't know. Isn't she like a fashion designer? Doesn't she have like a clothing line, a brand, I think? She has a clothing brand, right? Yeah. So her name right, is so Milano. Milano. Yeah. Yeah. Milano Dero Boutique. Oh, yeah. yeah. Milano de Rowe Uncle boutique. All right, but I'm Uncle I'm Clifford with I'm with Uncle, Valley? Uncle, Uncle Clifford. I'm with Uncle Clifford Where's rapping though. But why didn't they have Little Murder rapper? He's the rapper on the show. Uncle Clifford ain't I, a rapper. I'm staying far away yeah, from any yeah, commentary that has to do with Little Murder. I'm just asking. Little Murder is a rapper on the show. Like he made more sense. We know. He would actually make a lot of sense yeah. in that. Um, BT, listen back to what I said originally, Roy. BT, y'all got to produce some better shit. This is, it's just like y'all just got people in the room just trying shit, and y'all are paying attention to who has followers and algorithms and shit like that, and that's taking place of actual talent, and it's it's starting to it's noticeable at this point. Like this is, we got to get back to the the talent. Like who has the talent? Mm -hmm. Not not the algorithms, not the followers on social media. Who has talent? Who is talented? Because this shit that y'all just trying to slap together is is headed in a bad direction. That's all I'm going to say. Well, shout out to the awards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> shout out to the BT Hip Hop Awards. You know, prayers for everyone involved. Um, oh, my God. Thoughts and prayers. So when we were on our way to, uh, was it we, no, back from Charlotte? We were, we were on our flight. way back from Charlotte. So the night before I had I had posted a tweet. Uh, because it was in the studio with JD in Atlanta and we were just talking about um, he was talking about the thing with him and Puff that's coming up in Atlanta mm -hmm. which we have to go to if we're, oh absolutely if we're um, and then um, we was talking about the we started talking about the Rihanna Super Bowl show and I said damn man it's gonna be really big I said but she has to do Run This Town with <laughs> Jay and Kanye because that will be the first time that I saw your tweet and I completely agree three with black billionaires from the hip hop culture on one stage for arguably the most watched Half event time. of the yeah. fucking year. Maybe next to a Daytona 500 or some shit like that. I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. But the Super Bowl. Super Bowl halftime. One of the most watched <laughs> events in the world. I Super said, Bowl halftime versus NASCAR is very funny that, that those would probably compete. Yeah. It, 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 I'm pr pretty sure they would as far as ratings. It's just drive on the turnpike and look out uh, your window. It's the, same, it's the same thing. So I tweeted. I said, Rihanna has to perform Run This Town in Super Bowl. Three black billionaires on the Super Bowl halftime stage from our culture has to happen. In all caps. All you, caps. You all hit caps. the has to twice in all caps. Because I just backs. knew how powerful of a moment that would be. Mm -hmm. I knew what that represented. I mm -hmm. knew, you know, it's just that we might not ever have that opportunity or see that again. And right? the, the three money bags were, each of them were a different, each mm -hmm. money bag was a billion dollars. Billion dollars, 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 billion dollars in like, all three of those bags. You, were, okay. you have a great eye. Yeah, yeah. I never told and you And the that, three underscores now. match. I see what you try to yeah, do with the three. Come on, man. You, that's, you your angel, that's your angel number. Listen, nothing is by accident, Rory. Yeah, yeah. three letters in his name. Like So, three, the number three black. No, come, come on. Come on, man. Like you, I'm, this is what, I don't mm -hmm. even know how I did this. It just happened. Is that three H's? That has, wow. Wow. You got to do the science on this one. Come on, man. It's me. Are you suggesting that the Illuminati is the reason that they're billionaires in this tweet? No, 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 no. No, too far. I don't know how you read that, but no, definitely not that. 
220. Come on, 222. Come that's on. the devil. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> 22 twos. If you add up the 22 twos, 445. Yeah. You see what I'm doing here? Uh, and, you know, life has a way of just reminding you that not so fast. Uh, so we went our way to Charlotte, and uh, Peach sends a picture in the group chat with. What looked like Kanye in a White Lives Matter t-shirt. Mm-hmm. And Peach is someone that photoshops a lot of things. So I didn't, I was like, come on, Peach, what type of shit are you on right now? And Peach is usually I don't funny. Think put, yeah, I don't, so, I don't think you should put this out. <laughs> I was like, Peach, you're funnier than this. Yeah, you're, you're walking in line with this one, Peach. Like, this can be bad. And he's like, no, 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 no. He, he's really, he's this is really, the JPEG. <laughs> he's really wearing this shirt. So I said, Pete was sitting right behind me on the airplane. So I said, we were all right next to each other. I said, Pete, you serious? He was like, no, he's really wearing that. So I said, all right. So then I tweeted, never mind. <laughs> because it's like, Kanye just has we, we know what's coming because we talked about this before whenever Kanye does something like this Rory trust and believe he has some product coming yeah it was at a fashion show of things he's about to sell <laughs> right whether it's sneakers whether it's you know merch clothes whatever he's trying to sell something so when we saw this I said okay Kanye never mind you won't be on that Super Bowl halftime stage there's no way Jay and Rihanna's gonna stand next to somebody that wore a White Lives Matter t-shirt um then Kanye went on to set the internet on fire for the last three days. People are still talking about this T-shirt. Uh, Kanye tweeted like, "Aha, my T-shirt took more attention than the entire Fashion Week that was going on. None of you even know what people were wearing for Fashion Week. The only thing that mattered was my T-shirt." Again, this is Kanye's way of saying, "I can, I can, and I need all of the attention at all times." Basically, and I'm willing to wear things on my shirt that will make people upset. That will make people angry. That will make people have conversations. That will make people hate me. Whatever. He just needs the attention. Okay. He's going to spin it into something like, oh, you know, Black Lives Matter was, you know, was 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 a fraud. They were stealing money, which is something that I spoke on and they killed me about it three years ago. But but it didn't make you. I didn't throw on a, a White Lives Matter t-shirt. t-shirt. Listen, I can agree that, yes, there is definitely some evidence that the corporation Black Lives yeah. Matter has scammed no, people. Mm hmm. Yeah. I don't. I don't see where that leads to wearing a white lives matter. You can do all your think pieces to defend Kanye, and we don't get it. And he was suggesting that it's so obvious that it should go on a shirt. Like, this is dumb. This is stupid. Yeah. You only do this shit when you have to sell something. You only do it when you're in desperate need of attention. You then even went back on your deeper point of it and said, "How come no one cared this much when I was trying to get my kids?" Because that's a personal family matter that you won't leave us the fuck alone about. Yeah. Go talk to your wife. Right. The fuck do I have to do with that? Uh, now this has to do with the world. <laughs> yeah, it'll it'll probably be talked about a little bit more than your custody battle. And let's be clear, I don't I don't care that Kanye wore a White Lives Matter shirt. I don't give a fuck what none of these celebrities and these rich people do, honestly. Um, but I do understand that, you know, this is offensive and um it's just not in it's good just, good stupid. good taste. It's not good it's not classy. Um it's unnecessary. Kanye is is too talented. Um, he already is a fucking you know one of the most recognizable people and faces on the planet. I don't understand why he feels like he has to have this much attention at all times. Um, and why not do something that's gonna make people you know happy and make people you know smile? Like why use it to to make people you know create arguments and and go back and forth and hate you and not like you and it's just I don't understand it. And again, people can make all the excuses. Oh, you just don't understand. Kanye's a he's such a free thinker, and uh, this is the epitome of being free and not thinking inside the box. And that's cool. I, I, all right, I hear you. But there's Yo, other ways. White to lives be, matter is not thinking outside of the box. Yeah, I'm just letting you know that. Like I'm, I'm just letting you know that's not thinking outside th- of the box. This, but this is what I'm trying to. See. These are the things that people are saying, and it's just like, yo, come on, man. Like we people are not dumb. You know, it's a lot of people out here that are way smarter than that. You can't just tell us anything. You can't just, you know, do things and think that we're good, gonna just go with it because you ha- you you come up with some genius reason in your brain of what this does. And oh yeah, now I killed the Black Lives Matter thing. You're welcome. Like no 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 no. Shut it's up. other ways to do that. Th- this is not. And what an arrogant thing to say too. Yeah, like it, but even it, if you're talking about the ones that scam, no, you didn't. Everything Stop is it. self. <laughs> uh, everything is self-centered with Kanye. Everything has to be about Kanye. 
Kanye's the greatest. Kanye's the, the 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 best thinker. He's the most creative fashion guy. He's the most, you know, he's the most. He's gonna. He made the gap, you know, five hundred shoot up nine hundred percent when he attached his name to all of these things. Is centered around Kanye West, and you know, we know what this is. It's like Kanye. Listen, we we support you for the most part. You know, we love you. Uh, we think you're talented. You've made some incredible art throughout the years. Legend. But you you have these moments where you do things like this, and it's like, bro, what do you? What is this shit? Like, what is this shit, man? Well, there's other ways to go about this. There's other ways to do this. Like, surround yourself with people that can, you know. I, I believe Kanye means well. I don't think he's an evil spirited person. I don't think he's a, a evil hearted person. But he has to have people around him that just knows how to take his ideas and feed it to the public correctly. Like, th- this is just a bad idea. Whatever you were trying to do in this moment, you didn't do it. If you just wanted attention, you got it. If you just wanted to create a fucking, you know, a firestorm of 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 on the internet and set things ablaze, you did that. But for what? Like, what is the? I'll, I'll tell you. What is the goal? You would say that Kanye West, no matter what, has our attention. Yeah, his fans coming up. Democrat. If you want to call it the left Democrats, I don't put it that way. But people that grew up loving hip hop, Kanye West will always have our attention, even with bullshit. He still has our attention. We may yeah. not like it, but he has our attention. I, do you think Kanye West is internet savvy and wants to do things for the internet? I think he wants yeah. to do... I don't think he's internet savvy. So Candace Owens said this. I saw these, these clips going around with everything. Candace Owens said something that I agreed with, believe it or not. Wow. She said, the left has TV. They have the media, news, everything. The right has the internet. Mm-hmm. Now we can say woke culture, cancel culture, and in our world, it's big on the internet. The right wing shit is controlling the internet. It took us how long to get 200,000 subs or whatever? Mm-hmm. If we had a different rhetoric that was more right-wing, we would be at a million subs in one month. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, I see what you mean. In two fucking seconds, if you sp- <clears throat> spew a certain rhetoric on the internet right now, yeah. your YouTube subs, your, your media platform, everything shoots up way quicker than it does mm-hmm. for the type of stuff we talk about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Kanye West already has us no matter what with attention. Yeah. This right here just got the entire internet. Mm-hmm. On his side now. Yeah. So he has our attention no matter what. Mm -hmm. Now he has the whole other side of the country that was not paying attention to him on his side. He has the country now literally looking at him, whereas he just had us at one point. But at what cost, though? Oh, I'm not agreeing with it. I'm just just saying what he's trying to do here. Yeah, and that's my thing. He's he's lining himself with people that are showing him that the world... Trump got elected because of right-wing internet. My, they live and die off that Facebook shit. My thing Kanye's is this. following the same path of attention right. that Republicans are thriving in right now. And it's the internet. It's Literal not the news. Place. My thing <laughs> is this. Kanye is, you know, he's a creative, he's an artist, you know. What, at, how are you still clout chasing? At, at this level of success, at this level of, you know, the things that you've created, how how and why are you still clout chasing? Like why think. are you still chasing attention? Why are you still chasing, you know, the eyes and the ears? Like why why are you still chasing that? You have it. You've what, reached what? a certain level. You've reached a level that maybe 0.1% of people on the planet will reach. It's an addiction. Right. And that's, that's the and that, an and that and and that's the dangerous part of it. Like an addiction to anything. Is bad. I think that's what, where he used to be able to channel that and get people addicted to his art, which was his music. I think he's just addicted to attention, and he knows how to get attention, whether it be positive or negative. And nor, nor does he care what the attention is, exactly. as long as it's attention. Uh, you know, whereas most people will be like, oh, I don't want that type of attention. But as long as it's attention... He's fine with it. You know how easy this was for him to do? Put on a shirt, take a oh, photo. This was nothing. This is it took him two minutes of thinking. This was this was nothing. And but it's two minutes of thinking for ultimately what? Because you know photo again, again, <laughs> again, you know, again, you know, years from now, Kanye's gonna look back at this and his his stance on this will change. It'll be like, yeah, you know, for the moment, this is where I was at. You know, I wanted to do this and it, it turned into something else or whatever, whatever. It's, so it's like, I'm, we're calling it loud now, Kanye. This was a bad idea. I don't care how much attention you've gotten, how many follows you've gotten. 
how much your stock has gone up, how much money you've made from this. I don't, that doesn't mean anything to me. At the end of the day, when you lay down at night and your head hits that pillow, like you cannot tell me that you think this was a good move. It's, it's, and he's playing what is even more offensive is really trying to play both sides of the attention he's getting by talking to us saying, no, I'm just stating the obvious. Like, I'm just letting you guys know it's the obvious thing. How do you not see my message here? Knowing that all these new people that hate Black Lives Matter and hate black people are looking now like, well, let me attach myself to Kanye West because he is speaking against Black Lives Matter. Yeah. He's playing both sides, which is like, again, at what cost? Right. So you can have more people looking at you to say more bullshit. And again, you know, nobody's sitting here saying that white lives doesn't matter. Nobody's sitting there. That's not, that was never any of our stances. So, you know, to, to do this and to wear this shirt, it's like, bro, what are you, what is this? Like, that's not what that was about. Again, everybody knows how I feel about the Black Lives Matter movement. I always thought the movement, I thought the slogan was absolutely spot on correct. Absolutely forever Black Lives Matter. Never was a fan of you know, the LLC, the company, what they did with the money and the donations yeah. and the charity that they received. Never was a fan of that shit. I saw that shit a mile away. like everything else yeah. in the world. I was like, nah, 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 nah. Like, I already know what that's about. That's a money grab. People just trying to make money and jump behind something that seemed like they're for the people. And you know, Breonna Taylor's mom came out, I think, yesterday or something and said, yo, she has never even yeah. spoken to anyone from BLM. Has never, they've never reached out, uh, spoken to her, sat down, never sent her any money, nothing after Brianna's death. Um, so again, we know what that shit is about. But um, yeah, Kanye, I don't know, man. This is this is you missed the mark on this one. This is wrong. This this one uh is is again, I you know, the whole you're a free thinker Stupid and you're free and all this pointless. shit. I yeah, I hear you, but this is this is off. This is this was unnecessary. This was this wasn't this wasn't thought out well enough. This was um and I love, I love Boosie. You can always tell when Boosie is like, he screamed from the ignorance. He screamed this tweet. Yeah, 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 he was like, listen, after all we've been through as a race, you put this disrespectful shit on. You gives no fucks about how blacks have died and suffered to the hands of the white man. And you say Bush don't like black people. You say Bush don't like black people. Really, nigga? Um, yeah, man. And he's doing all of this by wearing... Uh, bedazzled, uh, bedazzled flip flops, chancletas, Balenci though, chancleta, <laughs> but they're Balenci. So Kanye is currently in a <laughs> another back and forth with another. Tremaine Emery from uh, the creative di- director for Supreme, an IG manic episode. Yeah, he's 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 spiraling, and uh, so we're watching this in real time. So uh, he posts a a Supreme uh, play on the Supreme box logo, uh, mm-hmm. but he put Tremendez. That's his new name for Tremaine Emery. This is the new skeet. This is the new skeet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> His caption reads, and to Tremaine, I'm changing your name forever. <laughs> Tremaine's new name as the BLM officer at Supreme is Tremendous. No relationship to Sean Sa- Mendes or, or e- uh, Eva Mendes for clarity. Uh, Eva Mendes for clarity. I'm glad I was thinking the whole exactly time. Because that's exactly where I was going. I said, is this Sean and what, Eva's relative? What did Eva do? <laughs> Thank what you, What does Kanye. Sean do? <laughs> We're about to find out. <laughs> Because Latinos believe in God. Do you, we you do. Yeah, I believe in God. Okay, you believe in God. Because Latinos <laughs> believe in God. So he just wanted to clear that up. Uh, companies what? don't hire creative directors. They hire BLM officers. For all the people that hate you and your weak ass pants and know you only got the job since you were black and used to work for me and you knew Virgil. Hey, Tremendez. Hey, Supreme. Tremaine doesn't even skate. <laughs> I don't know if you guys knew that. Tremaine doesn't skate at all. Uh, you got your girlfriend. Yeah, let's see your kick flip, Tremaine. Yeah. <laughs> You got your girlfriend to record me without my knowledge so you could threaten me on behalf of your Virgil killing bosses. You know what's very funny about Kanye West? He legitimately threatens people and does videos of cutting Pete's head off. But yep. then if one person says, hey, you were never really friends with Virgil. Stop with this bullshit. He's yeah. being threatened. He's being threatened. I'm being threatened. Yeah. You don't have the money to make it out of this one alive. <laughs> That's a threat. That's a threat. <laughs> This is the worst mistake of your life. But hey, if somebody jump in front of a train, what you expect? What? You broke my heart, Tremendez. <laughs> I took you off the streets, Tremendez. Only because you was the struggle version of Virgil. You threatened me, Tremendez. <laughs> I am your conscious, Tremendez. Is that a play off the Jamie Foxx shit? Yes. 
Hi, I'm tremendous, tremendous conscious. <laughs> I think it's okay Hi, to have my conscious. girlfriend go get receipts by saying text and recording yay without him knowing. <laughs> yeah, tremendous. <laughs> that will be perfect. The culture will love to see you destroy one of its bravest heroes. Hey, tremendous. <laughs> I think he's Tell yay to keep Virgil's name out his mouth. That's going to go over with flying colors. Hey, tremendous. <laughs> you got enough money to go and get yay? Hey, Tremendez, go become the Black Lives Matter officer at Supreme, even though you're not a real skater. Is this a Tremendez roll call? <laughs> Absolutely. Or a real designer. Hey, Tremendez, <laughs> listen to your conscience. Ignore the fact that your boss's security guards just slapped a child. Wait, Matter of fact, Tremendez, <laughs> you should be the new Malcolm X assassin. What? That's a great legacy. Wow. Tyler hates you. <laughs> wow. So all real skaters or real creators with real talent, bootleg this tea and sell it as a protest to talentless <laughs> NPC scumbags <laughs> who NPC get jobs hilarious. over you because corporations want to control the oppressed black vote with struggle Virgils. Well, okay. I don't know what the fuck I just read. <laughs> Do you think he, he had to have proofread that? I don't know. <laughs> What the fuck is happening? But I do know that Tremaine doesn't even skate. Yeah. That's all I learned from this. That's all I know is that Tremaine Emery, you're not a skater, so you should leave your job at Supreme effective immediately. I mean, I like the scheme, and he kept going back to the hook with the Hey Tremendez. Yeah. Add some layers Conscious to that. Jamie yeah. Fox uh, thing. Yeah, Kanye, I don't... Listen, bro. I, ASAP, Rocky Fuck you. What is What is going on? I, <laughs> I just, this is like a bad high school lunch table. Drake a fuck your baby mama's mama. That's real war. That was eight, <laughs> minutes, eight minutes ago? ago? Oh my <laughs> God. Now. Yo, where do you think he's posting these from? He's a, he's on the toilet. <laughs> oh, wait. Okay. Hold on. Are we Only somebody taking a shit could tweet like, could post like this. All right. Does this mean we could talk about this? Let's Drake. get gossipy because we never said it way back when this whole thing, when everyone was saying Drake is talking about Kim. You and I were privy to some information that we was like, nah, he's really talking about Chris. Mm -hmm. So has Kanye finally put that out? Drake, Drake will fuck, fuck your baby, baby mama's, mama's mama. mama. Um, Exclusive. This is, this is from the account of, of Kanye. He put this out. But during that time, a lot of us were privy to information that Drake was talking about Chris Jenner. That yeah. entire time, he wasn't talking about Kim. He was busting a left to go fuck Chris, not fuck Kim. <laughs> so I don't know if that's what Kanye's saying here, but it appears- That's definitely what he's saying. Beep twice and I wave. Yeah, oh yes. my gosh. I'm a little quiche right in your face. <laughs> <laughs> he's a demon, man. Yeah. <laughs> he definitely beat. To the X. Oh, dude. man. He definitely he's beat. He's beeping at our X. <laughs> yeah, this is- um. Nah. <sighs> that's real war. <laughs> Kanye, I don't, I don't know, man. I, I think you should. I, I, well, how is this account? As foul as it is to fuck your baby mama's mama, I just feel like wars have been a little bit crazier than that. I don't know if that's real war. How does Kanye not have his account banned? Has he seen like, the Pearl Harbor movie? I mean, he's not like, technically, oh, well, he kind of is technically bullying. How has he not had his account banned yet? I mean, it's also Kanye. I feel like some of that stuff in the caption to Tremaine Emery was like band worthy. Like, you know, I mean, yeah. make it out of this one alive and all of that. Like, a that's, a, that's a threat. Yeah. And, yeah. and you know, Rocky's at home playing with his child. Like, yeah, leave me the fuck out of that this. Ass. Yeah. That... Let's refresh again. Ambush week. Is he saying it's going to be the ambush week or ambush the week? Mm. No, I think that's the name of the CEO or oh. someone <laughs> over at uh, LVHM, the Louis. So he's, he's calling him weak, this guy. Uh, Bernard okay. Arnold. He's like, you're weak if you think what... Because he's blaming that guy for killing Virgil. Mm. What? It, it's... I, from my understanding, it was cancer, but... Yeah. <laughs> or maybe that's what he's trying to call him. So he's trying to say Bernard gave him cancer. Right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Listen, man, Kanye, we, we I hope don't even that you... Uh, try to pretend to keep up with this stuff. Yeah, I, I can't keep up with this shit. This shit is not, uh, doesn't move me at all. I just think it's just... Like watching a train wreck. It's like, all right, is anybody else watching this shit? But Kanye, listen, man, you gotta you gotta get some uh you gotta get some time to just like get your get your get your world together. Whatever world you're living in right now, get get things together. You Not can't just run to social media and just spew these things and put these things out. It's like you're talking to yourself. Nobody even knows what the hell you're talking about. Is it's, it's is, just is rap beef getting weirder or am I getting older? And not by rap it's beef, little, I don't mean like real beef. I mean like rap beef. It's a little bit of both. Because I think, I think you get old enough and you stop caring about certain shit. Um, but things are getting a lot weirder with why people um, 
beefing and what they're beefing and how they beef. I can barely keep up. I don't know who Yoon is. I don't know why Rocky's being involved in this. I don't know why Cardi B is beefing with every female rapper out right now. I, I'm so confused in all rap beef right now. I can't even when I go back to the timelines and try to read it and keep up with it. I have no idea who's who. Mm-hmm. No idea why they don't like each other. But you know I have no the, idea what they're speaking to. The thing is, though, Rory, I, I think this is just a, a a clear indicator that when all of these people be acting like they fucking cool with each other and they fuck with each other, they not. Oh, they, never, not. they don't fuck no. with each so other. For real. It's all for it's all for, you know, the, just the optics and yeah. social media. It's these like when the IG don't... girls uh, shout each other out on birthdays. They've yeah. never met. They're they, not they friends. don't. They've never met. They're not real friends. Yeah, they don't really care about. They're each trying other. to share followers. Yeah, yeah cash ups. We went to Miami together once. Yeah. <laughs> no, on the same dime with the guy you know, that flew him. both out. Yeah, him. He did that. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on with Nicki Minaj, Cardi B, and I am waiting JT. for you. I, this is what I came here for today, Rory. I just knew that you were going to have the scoop and you were going to be able to break all of this down to me on why Cardi B, Nicki Minaj, Remy. Malibu, Mitch, who else? JT, uh, who else is beefing? Lotto, uh, I don't Meg. Think Lotto. I think Lotto's actually Akbar, <laughs> Bia, Katie Bands, Glorilla. Who else is beefing? All of the women decided, fuck all of y'all. We don't like each other. And I'm pulling up to the Bronx and High Bridge. Meet me there. But we, all right. Let's not, act, uh, we'll, we'll start with our disclaimer. We love the female no, no, movement. No, we support the female movement. <laughs> We support. We love the, we female, love the female, and we support like, this movement right facts. here. Too. Like we love that. Yeah. Like facts. women are amazing. Yeah. Facts. But with the boom of female rap, do we not foresee the day that they would all beef because women cannot get along? And they never really liked each other to begin. There with. was no unity. No. There was. No. And sis, come on, sis, we got to work together. It's because yeah. female rap. Let together. me use your platform to get my shit popping, and then you know how that shit go. The all-out Twitter war was inevitable. Yeah. With this boom of, of female rappers, because they. Women can't get along. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, just call it spade a spade. Mm-hmm. I think females are amazing. Well, you can't say female. I think women are amazing. Mm-hmm. But this day was coming. Absolutely. I started seeing this with, uh, is Akbar her, her rap name? Yeah. Yeah. Praises to I just want to make sure I'm not saying anything offensive. Who is Akbar? This is who I thought started this whole thing going back and forth with Cardi B because she was on the Nicki Minaj remix. Wasn't familiar. I just saw a lot of, hey, you was sucking dick. You're all this shit. You know, typical female shit. <laughs> hey, you was sucking dick. Aren't they dick. all sucking dick? Uh, I mean, well, I would you, know, assume depends, so. you know, right? I think Cardi Half was like, you were sucking kids. dick to get him to love you. I was like, that's a pretty good strategy, Cardi. <laughs> Great strategy. Please don't kill that. <laughs> it worked off. Please. <laughs> is, that, is, that, is that a diss now? Yeah, like, you were sucking dick to make him love you. Please like, yeah. don't kill that strategy, Cardi, whatever you do. <laughs> they was going back and forth. Damaris, I think you should maybe break down some of this for us. But from my understanding, Cardi B is beefing with every rapper that was on the Freaky Girl remix with Nicki on Twitter. Okay. And it started with Akbar, then it went to JT, then it went to Malibu. It's not Malibu Mitch. It went to Melly. No, Malibu Mitch. I can't keep up. <laughs> then Cardi B went to High Bridge and was like, yo, I'm here. Pull up. Mm. And then Malibu Mitch, you know, traffic. <laughs> She got the other little someone, late. Some, sure. uh, someone killed themselves on the tracks. I so there was train delays. I don't know. It took her an hour and a half, which I understand to get up to the Bronx. I don't know where she was, but if she was downtown. What, the Yankees playing? Oh, yeah. Listen. <laughs> well, if Aaron Judge was swinging. Because Aaron Judge, is yeah. Going, yeah. He's, got, he's got traffic gridlock. <laughs> to, right, to get to High Bridge during a Yankee game is oh, very God. difficult. Oh, God. So if Cardi B is going to drop her location and the Yankees are playing, you need to give Malibu Mitch at least two hours mm-hmm. to get over to High Bridge. Mm-hmm. Showed up and then was like, yo, I'm out of here. And then put the time. Yeah. <laughs> um, again, I don't know what all of these women are beefing about. Um, honestly, I don't care. But <laughs> it's Nick, it's Nikki and Cardi. And you know Nikki is at yeah. her house just laughing her ass off at this entire thing. Yeah, I guess. I guess this is this is women's business and maybe we shouldn't be in this. Probably. Not. I guess maybe we shouldn't I mean, be speaking this. But we can laugh at it. Yeah. I think all of you women are crazy. <laughs> I think Cardi is hilarious for pulling up to High Bridge in the middle of the night <laughs> in an SUV with the window rolled down. I'm talking about Outington, like <laughs> Cardi, stay out of the Bronx. The Bronx is a wild place right now. We don't need Cardi B in the Bronx. Um, whatever this shit is about, y'all just fucking get in the group chat and curse each other out and just move past it because this is uh, this is stupid. This is some stupid shit. 
I d- is the Cardi and Nicki shit that important that Cardi has to beef with everyone? I didn't think it was. I I, I didn't. I, don't, I can't believe this is still a thing. Honestly, like this is like. Is is she going with the fifty strategy that anyone that did a song with Ja Rule they could get it? I to was about to say it, it feels it, it like basically it. is that it yeah. feels like it. it feels like if you a friend of the op then you a op type of thing. And JT used to used to be on the team, right? They were all QC at one point. Yes. Yeah. Matter of fact, JT Cardi was filling in for JT when she was locked up. Basically. Yeah, I don't. This is. <sighs> Listen, man. Shout out to the Bronx. Go Yankees. That's all I can say. <laughs> I just feel like Cardi is probably the wrong person to do this with because outside of her being as popular as she is and the stats she has, she'll do this all day online. And she's probably one of the better people at doing it. Just don't know if there's a win. Yeah. I, I, For is, either side, but... <laughs> yeah, like, what is, what, is the, what is the end of it? Like, what does the end of it look like in this beef? Realistically, hopefully nothing. Yeah, just nothing. Nothing. It just disappears? Yeah, yeah, and I agree, yeah. Hopefully, I mean, it has to be something. A record has to happen together. Well, that's like kind that. of well. I I want to see bars, like literally across both of them. Yes, well, have, yes. Well, oh, yeah. you want to see? I think said barbs. No, not barbs. I'm no, saying not barbs right are going to be there. No, the barbs right are, here. The barbs are there. Yeah, you're right here. Yeah. Oh, um, Sorry. well, here's all right. Here's the thing though, because a lot of their back and forth has been about ghostwriters and pen and all that, and we do know Party Fontaine is a ghostwriter Wait, for a lot of them. Imagine is that Party what they writing, beefing about who writes their bars. Well, you know that gets involved when women That's start arguing with rappers. Like you don't write your shit. Come on, man. How about this is a challenge for a party? What if he did wrote diss tracks for each of them and was mm-hmm. kind of battling himself? himself. <laughs> <laughs> also join the Lucas shit. Yeah, because they all use the same ghostwriter. So what if Party just wrote everyone's diss record? It's a big party right there. <laughs> What's that joiner record called where he does both sides? Every song Every ever that, that Joiner does. Ever does like, he, like, he, I think he did H M versus Zara at one point. Like, yeah. Oh, Joiner wow. has done every fucking sponsored by. <laughs> Joyner did every yo writing bars for H and M versus Zara. It's he like, did right, coke and what's Pepsi? going on in your for household? sure. What are you doing? <laughs> Joyner has done all of those. Cardi and Nicki, please squash this shit. This is old. It's it's going on long enough. I need to see Party versus Fontaine. <laughs> 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 who gets Party and who gets Fontaine? I think that I think that Cardi would get Party. Okay. And Nikki gets Fontaine. <laughs> oh, no, part, Nikki. Well, Nikki doesn't. Partisan. I don't think Nikki needs a ghostwriter. But there's a bunch of other women, and she was arguing with JT about ghostwriting. It wasn't. Oh, it wasn't okay. about Nikki. No. Okay. Then Nikki put up uh, her Twitter Abby or something of her with a pen. <laughs> That's how they beef. Cardi said JT asked for her writer. Cardi said that JT asked for her writer. And I, think I, saw, I thought I thought I saw JT respond like, "Yo, cut it out." You know, I write my own raps. Like, mm-hmm. some I think I've seen JT say that. Here's the thing: I, Cardi B has never struck me as a liar. That's where it's hard to beef with her too, because she'll be like, "No, you asked for the person writing my rhymes." <laughs> you can't say, "Yo, yeah, Cardi, you don't write your rhymes." Cardi's like, "I know," and then you ask for my ghostwriter. Yeah, Cardi will tell she'll tell her own shit. She don't just like you know what I mean like air your shit out. Cardi will tell her shit too. So that's why you got to kind of respect Cardi's um. Cardi stands in a beef because she, she ain't gonna just hide her bad shit. Mm. She gonna air her shit out too. Listen, uh, listen, I, I know I know Meg is is busy. And, Maybe and we should change is. our Abby. We should change our picture on our Abby. I, uh-huh. I write I write my own podcast. Yeah, so, so we need to uh, change our pictures to. Hmm. Let me see. Uh, Maybe Glorilla. Does Glorilla write her own stuff? I hope so. I don't know. Maybe we need to change the. Uh, we there's, claim there's, Ice Spice. There's male rappers that don't write their own oh, shit. Ice now, Spice so. is from the Bronx. Yeah, we could do that. We, we got we to gotta pick an artist, a female artist, to change our uh, Abby to for at least 48 hours. Nah, Ice, you can't. Don't tell me Ice Spice don't write her rhymes. That would crush me. I could feel the passion in her bars. She writes I, those. Ice Spice should never straighten her hair. Never. Agreed. I don't know why she's doing that. I mean, it's, I, think, I think she has it back to her curly hair. She has what? I think she has her curly hair. No, back. she needs to stay. That's, that's the Yeah, that's the, the brand. Stamp. Yeah. That's the... You know, that's the look. There's she has some, to. Yeah, I was gonna say, have you guys seen this? Oh God! Wow, what is this? What is this? So there were some leaks of Ice Spice sex clips oh, I don't floating around. Somebody leaked that. Shit. I don't want to watch that shit. That's corny. Oh yeah, yeah. somebody told me that her, uh, somebody, her, her ex boyfriend, somebody leaked the sex tape of her. That's corny. Yeah, I would. Dude, still do shit like that. See, I'm so like I really don't pay attention to a lot of shit that goes on on the internet, so I can't really. She said, you guys want them fake ass leaks to be me so bad so you can go beat your dirty little meat to it. Oh, so she's saying <laughs> Shout that's Shout out not to her. Ice Spice. She's man. saying they're not her, but they're- That's a perfect response. Clearly her. Why is it clear? Because of the hair? It, it's her. 
People are talking about like features, like she has a mole on her ass, so you can see. That's a lot of work. I wouldn't know. So yeah, I have not, I have not studied ice spice I, like that. Just, I, I just looked it up on Twitter, but that, that's what people are saying. Somebody said ice spice is uh, Annie if she never well, got she, adopted. <laughs> <laughs> I could see that. <laughs> I could see that. Uh, well, yes, I, I hope this this uh, woman on woman rap beef finds a common understanding between, you know women empowerment and all the things that we mm -hmm. love and they can empower each other true feminism why did drake unfollow ice spice <laughs> why was he following her <laughs> he flew her out to toronto to do ovo and then the day she left he unfollowed her <laughs> she, she thought missed, he was she thought he was, flight she thought he was filling up <laughs> oh my god Yo, drake could be the only artist to call her a munch no but you know why but you know why that's bad because if she was to tweet that to him, that crushes Drake's like whole image. Ooh. Oh yeah. Like if you a follow a girl and then she tweets, "Oh, you thought I was feeling you," <laughs> bro, that hurts. Like, <laughs> wait, she unfollowed Drake or Drake unfollowed her? I, Drake you know, blogs over here. I don't even know her. if Drake was ever following her. Was he ever following her? I can't keep up. He was when the song blew up. He followed her that weekend. I believe was OVO Fest. He flew her out. She did the song. She left the day she left. He unfollowed her. <sighs> You got what you want? Nah, hold on. They got Drake and his son and said, Drake and Ice Spice are hiding something from us. <laughs> I see it, though. That's <laughs> Maybe that's his daughter. Yo, the internet is a sick Yo, fucking place, I fucking man. hate the internet. It's a crazy world. It's insane. It's literally insane. Um, all right, well, yeah, that's that's all I know about this this rap beef. If you have any Barb takes from it, let me know. Um, Barb's... Um, uh, just uh, everybody, just 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 fucking relax. Sit down. Go do this. Shit. This shit is going on. Long. This Cardi Nikki shit has gone on long enough. Like I don't. It's just we get it. Y'all don't like each other. We understand. But I, it, we we don't have to have all the female rappers beefing with each other now. As a result of you know that's what Nikki wants though. Yeah, but it's just like <laughs> yo. It's come on, man. This shit is like nobody is. Let's move on. Like, just move past this shit. Nobody really cares that much, honestly. I was about to say quietly, and it's not quietly. Nikki has been very active lately and putting out really good shit. I mean, but Nikki is Nikki, bro. We we never gonna question Nikki's artistry and her ability. Like, we know what she's capable of, which is why it's like, yo, listen, just get to music. Like, all of this changing the avies and beefing us. Come on. All right, you know what? I do like where... Because this has been a criticism of, of Nikki and Barb's Relax. You guys go on Twitter all day and kill these accusations people have suggested nikki is a little too old for some of the internet games and beef that she has i like her sitting up in this tower right now just kind of coordinating she's not really in the beef she's just sending other people she's to do chess. it. Yeah. she's doing kind of what hove used to do from the office and just send people so he doesn't really have to do it or be seen in it so i like where nikki's at right now put out music make all the younger girls <laughs> go out and beef with cardi and hybrid and you could just sit at home with your child and I, I think, like where Nikki's at right now. And I if think you're gonna be messy, girls, do it this way. I think all of those girls are talented. I think Malibu Mitch is super talented. Very talented. I love Malibu Mitch. Um, you know, all these girls is like they got talent. It's like, I, so is this like a? Are they jumping in this to kind of get you know? Because now you got to ask. Is everything just for yes the attention? Yes. So that now you can again kind of move sway that into putting out a single or record and getting the clicks. Like I just don't it's, the way they beef now is just again I. I don't understand it because it's like, all right, is this real? Like, because when you talk about somebody's pulling up the high bridge and then somebody else is pulling up like that, that, this is what I'm saying. So it's like, real. all right, hold on. That's not the area to play these games in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Different. Like, you going to high bridge in the Bronx, like, we, where is this going? Because it could be, you know, just social media, changing a picture and posting a pen as a caption, whatever, that type mm. of shit. But now when you talking about you actually pulling up to areas. Yeah. It's a little different. It, all right. What it's are we doing? Different. Is this real? Is Because this is starting to feel like this is a real beef here. And it's like nobody wants to see a bunch of females beefing and fighting. And that shit is stupid. So surprise Offset didn't say don't go or like step in. Uh, I'm glad Offset has taken himself out of the Cardi Twitter beefs because he he kind of got in there for a second. Mm -hmm. I think he has his own family beef. I will say I've enjoyed how the Migos have handled this. They've been asked plenty of times. Obviously, it looks weird. We still don't really know. People are trying to get, and I get think them that's to say great. something that's like, oh, they got beef. I saw uh, Quavo mm -hmm. and Takeoff were, were on what? Big Facts? What is this? Yes, this is Big Facts podcast. Cool. Shout out to them. Um, <clears throat> and they, they gave the most political, amazing answer like, yeah, we just going to pray on it. Yeah. 
<laughs> but that's like, you know, but they said we family forever. That's yeah. never going to change. I could hear the hate in their tone, but I like how they're handling it. It's just like, <laughs> yo, you know, we, we made a business decision. He made a business decision. And, you know, it is what it is. So, yeah. But we know that this is like real family. These are, you know, it's not no Instagram, Twitter shit. This is like a real family situation. And they're just having, you know, discrepancies and disagreements as far as the business goes. So it's always fucked up when that happens, but we've seen this before. Well, they haven't really been tested yet. Thanksgiving is what? Month and a half away? Yeah. We got to see Instagram when Thanksgiving happens. I think they're handling it great. I I loved uh, when Offset was doing Rolling Loud. Uh, Quavo and Takeoff have an album coming out tomorrow Mm -hmm. or today if you're hearing this. All is well, I feel like, in the Migos breakup. Mm -hmm. Nothing messy. Thanksgiving is around the corner, though. That's going to be the real test. Are they invited into the Cardi household? I mean, but at the same time, they're what? All uncles, cousins, and nephews and shit? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There there is some... Yeah, but you don't invite all of your cousins and nephews to Thanksgiving dinner. I know, but there's like you there, might be that with that side of your family. You're, you're, you're missing my point. There's some overlap in. I'm not saying they're all going to have to spend Thanksgiving together, but who is going to decide? Do we go to Quavo's house or do we go to Offset's house? Oh, you mean from him? Okay, I get what you mean. It's a lot like of family, family members involved. Yeah, like their own family. You know, like you, like all right. You know the cousins want to hang out with Cardi for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Y'all know that. Y'all know where the cousins. They all the female cousins. They want to hang with culture. All the female cousins is going to Cardi's yeah. house for Thanksgiving. We yeah. know that. Where's my niece culture? At? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's getting so big. Where is she? I know. <laughs> you here to get a picture and a video with Cardi for Thanksgiving? No, I get it. I don't think they're all going to spend Thanksgiving together, but I do think Offset may take a picture of his table. And we're going to see the amount of family members that are there. And I think Quavo is going to do the same. And I think the internet is going to internet. I think and someone's table, they're going to start counting how many people are at the table. And they're going to start to count how many turkeys is on the table. Because you know that's what it's going to boil down. <laughs> oh, boy. Y'all had three turkeys over there? That's it? Oh, yeah. Like, that's, that's the best y'all could do? They, they must have chose Offset. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only three turkeys. I don't know, man. But I am glad to see that it's not uh, turning into any, like, you know, war of words on social media and, you know. No stupid beef shit because at the end of the day, it is real family. So, yeah. Hopefully, they can figure this shit out, get past it. But Quavo and Takeoff only built for Infinity Links available now? Yes. We got invited. Uh, well, if you're listening to this, it is, it is Thursday. We got invited to Gold Bar tonight to go crazy with Quavo and Takeoff. That was our yeah. invite. Are you trying to go crazy with them? Oh, I didn't. Oh, that was the invite? Yeah. It's oh, God, invite. I didn't hear nothing about that. <laughs> um, but no, thank you. I'm not you sure you don't want to go? Nah. I'm I wasn't going to go either, but if you want to go, I'll go. No, no, no. I'm cool on Quavo and Takeoff. Uh, but- I am gonna listen to only built for infinity links, but I'm not. I will not be a gold bar standing. You on You could join him for Thanksgiving. Now Thanksgiving is different. If we do like a vegan Thanksgiving, I might. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Do these guys look like they dish? eat vegan they give Thanksgiving? You vegan vibes? Do they give you vegan? So furky. I mean, the dreads is you know that's that 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 signifies a different level of consciousness, right? Mm. Um. Now this though is weird. Let's <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the yeah, bullets yeah. here. This yeah. is uh this yeah. isn't a vegan thing. Shooting oh, yeah. turkey. This this you know yeah we don't nah. And canary diamonds, isn't that meat? <laughs> <laughs> canary is a bird. So I'm, just, I'm just saying, I'm yeah. looking at the jewelry. No, no, no. Canary is a bird. You're right in that, in that regard. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't take Quavo and uh, <laughs> take off to be, uh, to be vegan. What about Cardi's Thanksgiving? Do you think that would be a vegan Thanksgiving? She, she was, was just a hybrid house? saying, wear that. Yeah, Cardi, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cardi, she's looking vegan. for the beef. Exactly. <laughs> She's trying to cook. Where is the beef? And then she was only yeah. there to pick up chicken from her aunt. She yeah, said. yeah, no. A Cardi and uh and and Offset, they won't have any uh. Damn, I can't go to either of the households, man. I'm no, sure there's like. Uh, Nor like were you lettuce. invited to either of the households. <laughs> oh, I could bring maybe bring a vegan dish, right? To bring eat by yourself, food. yeah, your own plate. No, I think everybody can. Instead try. of leaving with a plate, you show up with a. plate. Everybody should that's try the, it. That's the try vegan, vegan, vegan dish. Let, ho- let's do it. Let's do it. That's what we can do for, for Thanksgiving. Let's do a vegan Thanksgiving. And let's film it. I want to get all your reactions. To I mean, food. there's a lot of good vegan food. So you know, but I, I just mean, want to get Rory's reaction to the vegan food Thanksgiving. I don't think vegan food no sucks. I just, it just wouldn't be the rest of my life. No, like no, I so eat vegan food. So let's do a vegan a vegan Thanksgiving. We can dinner. do it right, right at the table. Let's do it. You in, Julian? I'm, I'm in. Let's you just do don't it. think it's funny though with holidays that vegans have to show up with a plate rather than I think leave it's with funny that we're still celebrating Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, that is a good point. That's but a way okay. better point. Whatever. It was a peaceful transition of land. Oh, you're right. Yeah. 
It's always been a transactional. <laughs> it's always been a transactional. It's a peaceful country. transaction of it land. It's always been a transactional country. And we're thankful for yeah, it. And we're thankful that they knew then what we know now. Yeah, we gave them like a third of the sports team's names. They should be grateful. Exactly. Right. Those are your reparations. <laughs> um, that was. I don't that like that Rory's that cross sick. came out. <laughs> that, was, that was insane. Um, but yeah, Quavo take off only built for Q, uh, Cuban links. Infinity, I, that's what I was about to say too. Only built for Infinity links uh, available now. That's weird that they chose that title and had the uh, the Infinity the links in the uh, background behind. Yeah, I don't. Those weren't Cuban links. Who is who is Raekwon and who is Ghostface? <laughs> Choose wisely. I, w- I would have. To- <laughs> 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 That's funny. Uh, Quavo, just off personality, ghost. He, he may be ghost. He's more ghost to me. And, yeah. and Raekwon, I think, is like, because I've I've been told, I don't Pretty know, if, that that takeoff is very lyrical. Yeah. And like, is a really good rapidy rapper when he wants. And to his be. demeanor, he's more you know, yeah, laid yeah. back, chill. Yeah. Okay. Do you think Quavo and Takeoff have listened to Only Bill for Cuban Links? I hope so. <laughs> I would hope so too. I just I hope. I, but I, they're like real hip hop. They they used to break dance and shit like that. They used to dance. So yeah. I mean, I, they they're hip hop. Maybe it's just my south uh, or you know, north bias rather that they that they just weren't. listening I hope so. To that type I, of shit. I, I mean, if they didn't, then naming that album only built for Infinity Links is even crazier. Word. But um, I'm, I think they have though. They mm. they hip hop. They hip hop. Uh, Life Jennings was locked up with a uh, uh, Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> I had no listen. Nothing, bro. Listen, nothing. We're living in a simulation. Nothing is like out of this world anymore. Oh. Okay. Nothing is crazy. Nothing is wild. Nothing is like anything. I don't know if y'all know this, but anything, anything is, possible. is possible now. Yeah. Okay. I, all right. Before I saw everyone killing Life Jennings because they started adding up his age and Jeffrey Dahmer's, and then I was like, y'all are not really Life Jennings fans because. His first album, he said it had been 26 years and 17 days. Mm-hmm. Been to five different prisons. Got three babies on the way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He was 26 when he put that out. <laughs> yeah. He's been in jail since he was born. Well, for him. Mm-hmm. So, of course, he was locked up with Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah. He's never been free. <laughs> <laughs> it was good to see him at a piano, which w- looks like the free world. Mm-hmm. Know, that, that could be some prison somewhere. Uh, but this was news to me. I had no idea that this was even possible, but as I said, we're living in a simulation now, so anything goes, anything is possible. But Life Jennings says Jeffrey Dahmer asked him to sing, which was uh, one of my favorite R&B songs of all time, uh, Pretty Brown Eyes, Mint Condition, uh, while they were in prison together. I just loved how much Life Jennings said the request of Jeffrey Dahmer was such a straight face, that there isn't some irony that Jeffrey Dahmer suggested that record and can, specifically is the, and jeffrey dahmer being a mint condition fan is also hilarious is, is the wildest shit in the world to me do you think maybe uh jeffrey sang that to his victims or he suggested to life jennings can you switch some of the lyrics to keep eating my heart instead mm. of breaking my heart yeah so they were <laughs> locked up together apparently um <laughs> I had no idea Dahmer was a mint. I would have never guessed that he was a mint condition fan. He doesn't give me mint condition vibes. It doesn't give me mint condition vibes. Kind of vibes did, his house, his, his apartment wasn't in mint condition. He went after pretty brown eyes. Don't get it twisted. But he was looking in some pretty brown eyes when he was uh, dating and killing these victims. I know we're not allowed to joke about the Jeffrey Dahmer thing because, um, you know, the internet is so amazing. <laughs> woke. Um, I saw someone tweet. Oh, I see all y'all saying what you would have done if you walked into Jeffrey Dahmer's house. Yeah. Damn, I didn't know y'all was gay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, why y'all there? Like, why y'all there? Like, what y'all, it's just what some gay shit going on. There's some gay shit going on. You don't go in there because there's some gay shit going on in there. Like, oh, oh, I bet. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, whoa. Not going in there. <laughs> <laughs> Look how easy it was back then to just be a serial killer. No, nah, because everyone's yo, like, yo, there's some gay shit going on in there. Everyone's whoa. like, yo, if I would have walked into Jeffrey Dahmer's house and smelled that, I would have left. And this, this dude was like, damn, at least. Y'all just admitting y'all gay? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, this was this. My was, bad. No jokes. Was, That's not funny. This was one of the wildest and strangest <laughs> uh, tidbits of my life, probably. That like Jeffrey Dahmer and Life Jennings was and, and Life Jennings <laughs> were uh, mid condition fans. Uh, this is well, music brings the world together, Mo. Uh, yeah, and apparently serial serial killers. And uh, he said he was a uh, what was he on the tier? He was cleaning the tier, a porter. I'm Life just trying Jennings to was a porter. figure out how Life Jennings was in jail for 26 years, 17 days, in five different prisons. How did he have two babies on the way? <laughs> you know how it is. 
<laughs> How old is that? <laughs> that? By the way, that's a classic album. Life Jenna's first album? Yeah, it's a bunch of numbers that it was his his, it was his, his, his prison his number. number. Yeah. yeah, he's forty four. He's forty four. I, I would say I'm a, a Life Jennings fan. I think he's super underrated. And I think his first album is a classic. But What year did Jeffrey Dahmer go to prison? Well, he I, it was something with that state where juveniles could be locked up with adults. So oh, okay. I, Life Jennings was like 14 when this was happening. And he was locked up with adults at the time. Okay. So yeah, everyone was saying it made no sense. I really don't think Life Jennings would lie about this. So He was locked up February 92. In life, I, yeah, I was 14 at the time. Damn. I really don't think Life Jennings would lie about this. I mean, this, this, it, I, I hope he I don't know him personally. Can, it'd just be a, ve- it'd be one of the weirder lies it, ever. And, and it, it <laughs> would be very easy to like find out if this is true or not. So, and oddly specific that if he was coming up with this lie, he'd be like, you know what? I would, I would sing Jeffrey Dahmer some mint condition. <laughs> yeah. That's just, that's some wild shit. But, um, thank you, Life Jennings, for that. And I'm glad that you, uh, Sang your little heart out for uh, your little heart. Jeffrey Dahmer because he did sing for him, right? Yeah, but he never really said what the review was from, from like Dahmer from Jeff. felt like, eh, <laughs> eh you, you know, a little flat, but it's okay. I'll let you live. live. <laughs> I'll let was, you live. Imagine, I'll let you live. <laughs> what, what, you know, what if Jeffrey Dahmer was like really on some Simon Cowell shit and was like a big music critic <laughs> and was like, mm, what's Life Jennings' real name? <laughs> Go back to his Wikipedia. His, what's what's his Life's real name? His real name isn't Life Jennings. Is his real name life? I don't know. I always What's thought that was his real name. Chester. Oh, oh <laughs> damn. Not just not Chester and Jeffrey. Yo, hey, Chester. <laughs> it's not really. I would stick to the mopping, Chess. <laughs> wait. Chester wait. Jermaine Jennings. Wait, wait. <laughs> life his real name is Chester? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to pretend like I knew that. <laughs> and he's saying for Jeffrey? <laughs> yes. Ch- Chester and, and Jeff Jeffrey. and Chester. Yeah. Oh, man. This is life. I'm telling you, it's a similar. None of this is. We mm. are the Sims. And We're if, it, and if they do a, a duo, it would be Jester. Oh. The two of them together. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Tearing off the prison. Oh, um, God. What do we have next, Ed? I'm sorry. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, oh, we can't. All look right. What's next? Good luck. Tra- <laughs> good, luck All right, man. good luck. Good luck. Tra- uh, <laughs> new music. Um, YG, I got issues now. Rory, you was uh, listening to that when we walked in. Yeah, I'm a YG fan, man. You said you liked it. I do like it. I saw him getting some flack for the how to uh, how to how to rob a, a rapper. De- definitely the didn't read the room. Bad timing. I, maybe he turned it in. But even before that, maybe he shouldn't have. <laughs> he, he, it just wasn't the right time. Should have pulled it out. Yeah. It wasn't. The, it wasn't. It was. It wasn't the right time. Um, you know, I understand the song was probably written and recorded well before the tragedy with P and B Rock happened. But again, you have control of the now, and you know the song was on your album. You knew the title. It even, just even bad with the, even with the pop stuff and and everything it just probably wasn't the right yeah and shit, i'm sure I'm, i don't think yg is trying to i don't make think so either. fun or light of no what happened i don't think, with I don't Rock, think that but at all. it's just it's just bad timing bad timing but i mean other than that i do think it's a, a solid album um i think the nas record is is fire i wish i wish yg would do more records that sound like that i'm not even saying the nas feature but just that type of stuff i think when yg gets like in his real musician bag, like when Terrace Martin was doing his shit on My Crazy Life, yeah, he really shines. Like I think YG is a, a he steps up to whatever the producer is doing, and mm-hmm. that's why I love to see him do sounds that aren't the typical YG type of shit. I'll but, be honest, I didn't when YG when we first uh, heard YG, I didn't I didn't I didn't expect his career to be this long or this successful. You wasn't trying to toot it and boot it. No, no, you definitely, definitely tooted something and booted. I definitely her. never tooted. You booted. She tooted, booted. she tooted on you and then you booted her. Mm-hmm. You told her to toot it and boot it. Oh yeah, for sure. Well, you know what's funny? Even with Todd Holler's career, <laughs> I would have never guessed YG and Todd Holler to have the careers they've had off tooted and booted. It felt like one of those in the moment, mm-hmm. uh, quick, you know, to here today, gone tomorrow type of singles that we liked. Mm-hmm. Ty ended up obviously being the genius that we know he is. And YG has had an incredible career and I think has a classic album in My Crazy Life. But it is really funny. Tootit toot and Boot it wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought that YG, Ty Dolla and Mustard for that point. Like Mustard is, is a legend. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Tootit and Boot it doesn't represent their careers. As much as that no. record is fire, it felt like a one hit wonder. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I didn't, I didn't expect for him to go on and then put out an album like My Crazy Life. And um, 
and just have features and songs like mm. and really perform the way he has. Like he, YG has really surprised me. He's really surprised me as an artist. Um, but I didn't. I listened to like a couple tracks on it, but I did like the fact that it wasn't super long. Fourteen yeah. tracks. He didn't go crazy and do 20, 20 something, 24, 25s. 14, right to it. Um, yeah. So I'm going to check out the rest of it. But the music sounded good. The, the shit that I did here, the music sounds real good. I fuck with YG's album. Uh, Freddie, Gibb, Freddie Gibbs, Soul, Soul Separately. Um, the Rabbit. I think uh, off a few days. It's just off a few days. I think Push has some competition for rap album of the year. <sighs> Ooh. That's um um okay. I still I have still I like... still have it's almost dry as rap album of the year as of right now. Mm-hmm. But off these few days, I'm I'm gonna live with this Freddie album. I think he has some competition. Uh okay, I'm not mad at that. I like uh I like um a uh, Ramona Ramona Park. Mm-hmm. I think Vince is definitely Vince, up there. Yeah. Vince's album. Uh, uh, Jid, uh, as much as that's a rap album, I I'm talking about like a rap album. Yeah. I, if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. A rap album. I think West Side Boogie has an amazing album. I think his rap is definitely up there. Shit. But even his is, is so melodic and so much artistry outside of just rapping. Push like, Push album was dope. Yeah. It was some good rap this year. It was some good rap. Now, 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 this one just came out, so I can't, you know, I'm not ready to take that that leap yet. But this this album sounds really fucking good though. Freddie definitely delivered with this project. Freddie hasn't, he hasn't put out no bullshit. Like I don't think Freddie has put out a bullshit album. Like his nah, albums are a quality, quality rap hip hop albums. Like the production is great, the sound, the, the we know what he's gonna do as far as bars and, and rapping. And uh, his the features have been dope. Like I, Freddie Gibbs has put out some really, really dope projects, man. The last one was Fully Alchemist Alfredo, which was my favorite. Um, Incredible Freddie project, and that's saying something because I love Bandana and Bandana again, Mad Lib. It, I was interested to see how he went when he didn't go the one producer route. Mm-hmm. And I felt like he delivered. This shit might be my second favorite Freddie project, again, off just a few days. Um, I'm excited to talk to him about it if we get that opportunity. Yeah. Um, outside of the, the Benny interview we did, because I don't really care about that, that beef shit. Mm-hmm. I want to talk about this, the music and, and him Put yeah, shit together absolutely, cause... man. All that other shit, like I said, I just want to see those two guys, you know, squash that shit and, and move on. But you know, just talking, just music. F- Freddie has been fucking delivering, and I'm always a consumer and a lover of hip hop. So for that alone, I just like you know salute to Freddie because he he hasn't dropped the ball. He's put out quality. Um, he still holds rap to a high regard, a certain echelon of just bars and the way he constructs his. You know his his verses and shit like that. Like he's just he's he's hip hop. He's rap. And I was it was dope to see that him and uh, Jeezy squashed their uh their old beef. And you know he said he bumped into Jeezy. I think at the airport. And, yeah. You know just apologized to him and shit like that. Um. And he said I mean he said on the album too like you know I could have handled that shit better. Mm-hmm. I, I was pissed off and mm-hmm. I went off that emotion and it was a kick in the ass I probably needed anyway. So I thank you for my immaturity. Yeah. Even though I regret how I handled the Jeezy situation. So I, I thought that was some some cool maturity. And I like the fact that he didn't use the album to really go at Benny. Like nah. it, wasn't, it wasn't no, you know what I mean? Like I I I mean I I, I kind of thought it would be just because of you know the time and him being in that, you know, situation with with, with Benny right now. Like I just I thought that I would have heard some bars directed his way, but it was it was it you was could, like, oh right. shit. Like okay. You could say Freddie does a lot of quote unquote weirdo internet shit. He does a lot of clout chasing internet shit by definition, if that's how you view it. Mm-hmm. Does a lot of messy shit where you're like, yo, what are you doing? You're not even this type of guy. Mm-hmm. You have to give him the credit. He never puts that into the music. The music always stays with integrity that. every single time. So you can that. say what you want about his internet antics, but it's never put in the music. I respect Because if that. he did that shit on the album, I would probably be lost as a Freddie fan at that point. Like I was, I was glad he. I'm not gonna lie. I was, I was. It was so good to see or hear that he didn't do that, didn't go that route. That was just like, all right, like this is, you know, what I mean, like because that takes a kind of take to me takes away from. The situation takes away yeah. from the music. Like I know a lot of people like to, you know, sprinkle that in there if it's real and they going through. But sometimes that takes away from it. Sometimes it's like, man, we we know we know what that is. But like, look, we want we're listening to this album to get away from that. Yeah, we're listening to this album to get something totally different. To just hear good music, good bars, and 
Freddie definitely did that with his album. So so separately. He, he brought back the comedian interludes. Yeah, real real album <laughs> shit. I mean, Jeff Ross and Joe Rogan. I know that's probably not the comedians you guys want to hear from <laughs> in interludes, but yeah. I thought it was nice to bring back uh, comedians. Anderson Pack, Raekwon, Rick Ross, Moneybag Yo, Kelly Price, Offset, Push, Music, Soul Child, Scarface. Scarface. Yeah, man, he 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 got the he got the right features. You know, it sounds good. Like this is a really really good project. I'm not mad at your take of it being one of the best uh hip hop rap albums of the year. So yeah, and I think I'm gonna give my real review and questions when we have the opportunity to speak. To Freddie, so don't think this is the last time we're going to talk about this album. Yeah, you got to live with it, you know, through the week. Absolutely. Uh, Rather Vision, Dark Hearted were probably my two favorites off it. Um, Grandma Stove, I love. CIA, I love, and maybe it's just a rap nerd in me. Like, remember when we heard Snitch, Pusha T, Pharrell, mm-hmm. and it was like, damn, how is that? That, uh, why well, I'm, I'm blanking. I failed acronym? English. Well, yeah. How has that acronym been sitting there forever and no one knew? Mm-hmm. CIA, Crack Instagram and A's is mm-hmm. one of the the funnier and more relevant acronyms ever. Yeah. Like that was some genius shit that he put in, and especially the verses that he tied into that hook. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's a phenomenal album. Sold so separately available now. Um, the Tory Lanez project, I, I didn't hear it yet. I didn't either. I'm hearing I'm hearing good things about it though. But Tory, he's oh he, he Tory puts out good music. Tory doesn't put out. A lot of bullshit music. He puts out good music. I didn't hear this album yet, but I am seeing that his first week sales are looking like 22 and a half. Yep. Mm. Good numbers. I mean, yeah. Solid. In this day and age, Solid. 22,000 is and, crazy. And with everything that he's up against and he's going through right now, yeah. um, you know, solid numbers. Yeah, I saw the whole blackball thing with, with Tory Lanez and the baby and the baby selling lower and Tory Lanez still possibly being number one. We could debate about the whole politic game all we want. Is the music hitting? Is really where I stand with shit. Yeah. And, Good music surpasses all of that. And I feel like <clears throat> with the playlisting stuff, because that's been like the number one thing, like you're blackballed if you're not playlisted. And yeah. I think at a time that did matter when your single numbers were added into your first week album sales, mm-hmm. now that they've taken that away, yes, of course, playlisting can help you. Don't get it twisted. Mm-hmm. But it's not added into your first week numbers the way it used to be. So it's less of a black ball, I feel like, when you're not on playlists. Russ says uh, black bald artists don't exist and explains that if you really do have fans and make good music, then your sales won't flop. Um, This is probably another reason why rappers don't like Russ. <laughs> I love Russ, though. Like, I do, Russ too. Russ is because he's not wrong. He's not wrong, but it is. You don't want to hear it in this moment. Like if you're sitting on the opposite side of that, if you're the baby, you don't want to hear those words from Russ right now. No. But if the music is good, people are going to listen to it. They're going to play it. Um, so Russ has, a, okay. Russ has a point. He has a point, but, and I usually agree with Russ all the time for the most part. This is just a very open-ended statement. I do agree with him. Yes. If you make good music and you can give you it really directly to fans. your fans. Yeah. You know how hard it is to have those two things? <laughs> no, yeah. But that's why he said, so if you really do have fans and make good music, if you really do. Okay. But it's hard to really have fans. I know plenty of people that make good music that don't have the fan base that they deserve. And they would have really good fans if they had some opportunity to get that really good music pushed to actual fans. Does that make sense? Well, I understand what you're saying. It's, yes. it's way easier said than done in this instance of like, no, I just make good music. No, and but like, I, you're I, good. I, like, it just doesn't work that way. No, no, no. But I think that I think that <laughs> sometimes what, you need the machine and playlisting helps and having people behind the scenes that can. No, push we know your good we know the, we know the knob Russ, turners. We know the Russ, things. On that, the other hand, definitely did his SoundCloud thousand hours he built type it. of shit. He, he did. Built he, he built the shit mm-hmm. and fucking sold out Radio City. Like that's incredible. He built it, and he is allowed to say this. I just think. He is an exception to the rule in some regards. Yeah. There's not a million Russes. Like, so no. you can't just say, like, oh, yeah, like, just, yeah, just make good music and, like, put it on SoundCloud and, like, you'll sell out Radio City. It's like, it doesn't work that way. I'm not no, saying he's got, really saying that. No, but. yeah. He's not saying that. He's just saying, like, you know, if, because uh, these artists that are, or the fans that are saying these artists are black, well, these are artists that seemingly have success. They have fan bases. Yeah. So I think what Russ is saying is, yo, if you have fans, if you really have fans, and you make good music, 
the the your, your sales won't 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 well, won't suffer. I don't think he's saying this, but I'll interpret it through how some people would with the baby. The baby made good music and made singles, but a lot of his fan base may have been the moment fan, mm-hmm. and the moment fan moved on to the next artist that was hot. Mm-hmm. And if the baby doesn't have the industry that will make sure he still stays in the playlisting on top Spotify page, he doesn't have a real fan base. He has the people that are in the moment. And if he's not the moment, then he can't sell. Mm -hmm. So it's not real fans at the end of the day, even if he's making the same quality of music he was before. Yeah. But, well, I am going to, um, I am going to listen to the, to the Tory, to the, to to the Tory album. Um, but are you, are you dissing this one as well? I hope not. Okay. I, I, I hope not. I didn't check my mentions. I don't, I don't even. I don't. I don't be nowhere. Well, somebody dissed me right now. I was like, "Fam, I don't even really exist." For real. Yeah. Like, I'm never anywhere. I don't really exist. Yeah, like I don't go. I'm in the simulation too. Yeah, I mean, I'm. I don't exist. I'm not even here. Um, speaking of black ball, Will Smith's return with uh the movie in Emancipation was Will Smith blackballed, and he looked emaciated in this picture. Uh, <laughs> emaciated. <laughs> Is that a word? <laughs> It, that better be it is word. now because I worked hard on that joke. <laughs> it better fucking stick. Wait, he was at the crib just yeah. writing it oh, out. God. As soon as I saw this picture, I was like, uh, emancipation, emancipation, proclamation, yeah. mm. waiting, provocations. Yeah, Ooh. emaciated. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad he waited. He hated it. <laughs> no, no, I'm not you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man can't see the. Uh, no, I get it. Um, so yeah, uh, Julian pointed out that uh, Will Smith is a slave in real life, and now he's playing a slave oh. to the movie wait, studios. Will, wait, wait, wait Julian pointed that out? <laughs> yeah, that's what Julian pointed out. Okay, <laughs> when you guys are at the club in Charlotte, no, no. <laughs> right, right here in your living room, <laughs> right here on your lovely couch. Because we were talking about a cloud. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Will Smith emancipation. So this story is about what now? I believe a slave. Uh, <laughs> it's autobiographical. Autobiographical. Wait, does he have the actual? Chain around his that's a sick oh, movie. Jesse. Those are infinity links right there. <laughs> oh my fuck. That's only built God, for infinity bro. link. Those are not Cuban links. That right there, my friend, you are my property for an infinity. I'm not this laughing is never coming that's off of saying neck. everything. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh so Will Smith shares a sneak peek of emancipation. Will Smith Emancipation. The actor plays a slave who embarks on a perilous journey to reunite with his family in a film which is inspired by a true story. This was the hardest movie I've ever made. Smith wrote on his Instagram (laughs) post. Blood, sweat, and tears. Literally. Shout out to Apple who doubled and tripled down on their commitment to deliver this epic story to the world. Uh, Oh, it's Antoine Fuqua. Okay, Antoine Fuqua directed film in theaters December 2nd. And it begins streaming on Apple TV a week later. I like how they do that now. They just put it in the theater so that it could be eligible for a Grammy. I mean, Grammy Oscar. Well, he's um, banned, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, he can't go, but the movie can still be, I guess. He's reuniting with his family. What if his wife is Jada? I know where you were going with that. And, and she's just... fucking the master. Um. So yeah, this movie- <laughs> Julian will, said that. This, this movie airs <laughs> December. Decided. Well, it's released in theaters December 2nd. <laughs> And is streaming on Apple TV December 9th, 10th, I believe. So he did put the Oscars in a very uh, peculiar situation. Though. Yeah, because now if they don't nominate this movie. So you're banning me from the Oscars. Don't, you, you can't ban my our slave, stories. My slave movie. You can't ban yeah, my no, ancestors. No, no, I see where he's going. <laughs> of course. You know what Will is doing. Oh, I I'm can't sure go, this, but my people will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> my now, Grant, I'm sure this was in production well before can the slap. Can he get out? Can he but get out? I didn't even when listen there's to there's a him. will, there's a I, way. No, I heard one. I just, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> I just want him to leave. Why won't he? Why you keep showing up? Um, <laughs> yeah, the infinity links. <laughs> uh, December 2nd, Emancipation, and hopefully what is now a, a, a nourished, because yeah. he was malnourished in that photo. <sighs> Anyways. Um, December 2nd. In theaters, Antoine Fuqua directed. Great director. <laughs> that was the trailer. I we, love Antoine Fuqua. Apple, Great Apple director. TV. Uh, Shuri has been revealed as the Black Panther in the new trailer. I didn't see the trailer yet. Um, I'm hearing it was dope, and people almost cried again from the trailer. But we knew that when we saw the first trailer that the sister was going to be. Well, I, I I felt like she would be the new mm. Black Panther. So it has been revealed that Shuri will indeed be the new Black Panther. Here goes that women's empowerment movement all over the world, even in Wakanda. I mean, I I love everything with the women empowerment. Oh, I do movement. too. I empower women every day of my life. I love every it. Day. Um, when is that coming out? When is it, is that around Thanksgiving? 
I believe. Yeah, yeah, like, they will leave sometime uh, in November. You no, know, uh, which should be Women's Month too. I feel mm. like they should. Is have, it not they should have, but they should have. There should be two months. I think they should have every month. If you ask me, I, listen. To, I if, celebra- if you're asking, I celebrate me. I don't know women. if you're asking. Me. Did you ask me? Women every Did you month? ask me? I don't need to ask okay, you because cool. we celebrate women every single every month. single day. There's no of question. The year, every minute, every hour. Right. Yeah. Every rising the, sun, the every year, setting moon. The year of our Lord of Jesus women. Christ. Oh. Absolutely. 2022. Um, National Boyfriend Day just passed. Oh, Rory. I don't skip over since we were in movies. Last seen alive. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Have have you uh, have you watched Last Scene Alive? No, I didn't. But I saw you talking about it and how terrible of a film this was. Oh yeah, no. Top five biggest waste of my time in Netflix history. What was it, it about? It was trending number one on my algorithms, which may say a lot more, more about, about my algorithms yeah. than yeah. anything else. It was number one on mine as well. Oh, but well, but naturally, I like Law Abiding Citizens. So when I saw a Dude and I saw it was trending number one, I was like, Fire Oh, I'm gonna now. love this. Law Abiding Citizens is a great movie. Yeah, it is a great movie. I, incredible movie. Yeah. Great. And not for nothing, this Last Scene Alive trailer. It sold you? A little bit. He was in the gas station, like, on some, some uh, what's Le- our guy taking? Le- Liam? Yeah, he was on some Liam, like, some Walmart Gerard version. Gerard Butler. Yeah, I called him great way, value Liam. In a he, weird way, Gerard Butler. He did Butler, get gas station Liam. <laughs> and it's crazy because we first, we first, well, I, I can remember seeing Gerard Butler was 300. Right? Yes. Epic, fucking iconic movie. yeah. We did, but we but ever finding, think that Gerard Butler would end up in a movie where you would say it's easily one of the, the worst, worst movies, movies I've ever seen uh, ever no. seen in your life. I didn't think so, especially because of after Law Abiding Citizen. So the trailer was like, all right, bet he's at the gas station. Um, they let him keep his accent, and they were clearly in the South. So I was like, all right, this is gonna get really dicey. Mm-hmm. He didn't even try to give an, like an American accent. Okay. I said, let me give it a try. Julian, where do we even begin on it's, the travesty of this entire movie? Man. They get into the gas station. All right, his wife gets taken away because a truck pulls up and blocks his vision. Was the truck planned? It had to have been. No. Oh, the same way they got happen? off? No, this movie wasn't planned. <laughs> they just showed up at the station? No, that truck pulled up for real just in the scene. Yeah. <laughs> that was the PA truck? It was, clear, it was clearly like... Within 10 seconds, we was like, oh, obviously the guy that owns this gas station is in on it. He's like, what are you talking about? I never saw your wife. And his wife was there five seconds ago. Yeah. They didn't even try to hide any of the reveals at any point. The cameras that weren't working, that clearly worked. They had a red blinking light. Like, it was so bad. And, and what, all right, what, what's this guy's name that we love? Gerard Butler. Gerard Butler. He kept going through where he, I felt like he was confused as an actor <laughs> if he should play somebody that is he thought gerard butler was confused as an actor during this movie if he should play a fucking secret agent killer or just some regular guy like he went back and forth through it when it started i was like oh he lost his wife but we don't know that he's really he pretends to be a real estate agent and he's really a killer for real special no 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 no. he was just a real estate agent agent. (laughs) oh he didn't have like no no hidden like no we techniques it appeared that he was gonna be somebody like oh shit they took the wrong real estate agent's wife yeah like they don't know no he was a real estate agent (laughs) like (laughs) so he wasn't he wasn't undercover green beret like no but then the whole movie I'm trying to figure out why well, I think Gerard is trying to figure out if he's a CIA agent or not. Like, okay. he's sitting there. Sometimes he's nice with a gun. Then other times he's like, what do I do with this? Okay. <laughs> Got it. The cop thought it was him the entire film and they never figured out that relationship. It was just so poorly written. And then you think the cop is in on it, but he's just, he's just an idiot. He's just a bad cop. <laughs> he's just a shit He's cop. just a dumbass. <laughs> So I shouldn't watch this movie. <laughs> Every time you think it's about to get ill, it's like, oh no, he's just stupid. <laughs> so I shouldn't watch this movie. I mean, you could hate watching. No, it it's not, and again, it's not one of those movies that's so bad you have to watch it. It's just a fucking awful it's, movie. Oh, okay. All right. So it's just like it is not one of those where it's like you're not gonna believe how bad this movie is. How long is this movie? It's like an hour and oh, a half. A oh, lifetime. No. <laughs> <laughs> that you'll never get back. <laughs> <laughs> then All you, right. And well, then they no, then they try to pitch it. The pitch was the best part because it was him at the gas station and then like the little bio shit was like, it reveals secrets of a town you'll never know. Ooh. So then you start thinking the parents are in on it. The cops in on it. It's like, no, the parents are just stupid. <laughs> the cop is just stupid. It's a bunch of fucking rednecks smoking meth that kidnapped a real yeah, estate agent's wife. Yeah, where they keep her is in a meth lab. <laughs> and then, of course, the meth lab blows up. Yeah. Oh, oh shocker. Yeah, yeah shocker. 
All right, well, don't watch Last Scene Alive on Netflix now. You might want to skip past that one. You're up and right then, to in the, in the middle of the movie, there's no dialogue for about 45 minutes except for, hey, Frank sent me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Frank sent me. <laughs> Yo, Knuck- Knuckles sent me your way. <laughs> you go, who's Knuckles? That shit was so bad. <laughs> Knuckles is Frank's friend. And the guy's like, oh, why didn't you say that? He goes, follow this road. It's the only road. There there's was no, no other, other road. roads. There's no other roads. You go Mike, just just you, walk straight. It's oh. the worst fucking movie ever. Okay, so it's one of those movies. I get it. <laughs> so bad. I get it now. It's like that bad. All right, imagine well, don't just watch that imagine shit. just running through the woods and then <laughs> coming upon a road, and then there's a guy. Mind you, you're looking for your wife yeah. in a town you've never been in, and then you just see a guy. You're like, uh, the Knuckles sent me. <laughs> <laughs> And the guy's like, how do you know Knuckles? He's like, because he's Frank's friend. And he's like, well, get out of here. And he's like, well, Knuckles is going to be pissed. And the guy's like, oh, I don't want to piss Knuckles off. I'll show you where the meth lab is. Wow. <laughs> That's the exact scene verbatim. That's nasty. That sound- Who wrote this? I have no idea. Is Gerard Butler doing bad? Like, he took this movie on. Is this one of his, like, his passion projects or something? I don't know, man. He's not I- on any of the... Oh, he didn't even produce, uh, write, none of this shit. Oh, yeah, this is... Who's his agent? <laughs> he can't be this this down bad because this was really bad. I felt like I felt like I was gassed up off Law Abiding Citizen and Three Hundred. Like yeah. I feel like I was told he is a ghostwriter. Like, and this is really who he is. His powers are gone. This was fucking awful. But well, skip over that movie on Netflix. Uh, Look at the cast. There's four people in the cast. I was gonna say this is. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to see who else was in this. The box office. Wait, this was in the box office? No. It says, yeah. yeah. June 9th. Made 3 million box office. 3 million, 3.4 million in the box office. Oh, they, they're in the red. They have to be. Yeah. I mean, they got, apparently the general rating is 3.5 out of 10. So. There's eight people in this film. One Seven. Patreon episode, I want to like bring up scenes in this movie to break them down. <laughs> it's honestly it's so bad. Like when he gets into the meth lab and is looking for his wife... <laughs> to, to open up the, never mind no dude <laughs> to, op- to open up that fucking truck thing <laughs> oh you're not a killer why don't you ask your friend Frank if I'm a killer <laughs> Jesus Christ <laughs> Rory liked that movie yeah, yeah, he no, loved that movie he liked it he, loved he it. remembered it yeah he likes the movie because I could not stop laughing about how bad it was and not in a good way I was mad that I was wasting my time on Rotten Tomatoes, the film holds an approval rating of 15% based on eight <laughs> reviews. Review. That's everybody that was in the cast. They all left a review. <laughs> yeah, that's like when uh, the owners of the restaurant leave a Yelp review. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, I know. I know. That was you. This has an average rating of three and a half out of 10. Wow. Oversold it. Common Sense Media gave the film two stars out of five. What if blackballing the film failed him? to manage to create a sense of intrigue about any of its characters. <laughs> None of the characters you were none of the characters you were intrigued about. Nothing made sense. What if they just blackballed him? What if it's Gerard? It's over for him. Yeah, it might be over for Gerard. Gerard. They got him out of here. <laughs> it's time, Gerard. And then the cop, I don't know what you did, Gerard, but it's over. And then the cop tried to kill dude in the back of the. I've never mind. Forget it. Just watch it. It's like I'm gonna watch this movie. Now. I have to. Uh, Trump is suing CNN Rory for four hundred and seventy five million dollars. He's got lawyer fees. Uh, he's, he's got a lot of money to pay too. Uh, Donald Trump sued CNN for 475 million calling for, calling him an insurrectionist, racist, Russian lackey and comparing him to Hitler. I know, I know nothing about, uh, the funny shit is Trump might win this shit. Well, here's the thing. I know. Fuck the actual, uh, lawsuit and settlement. Can lawyer Twitter tell me, is this a good move? Because if there's an ongoing trial or situation here aren't they they can't talk about him right Mm. if we're suing each other and we're in litigation about some stuff don't you have to be quiet legally about is this a way of him just trying to get CNN to to be able to legally talk about him that's possible yeah going into the next uh, like this could not be about money or anything right oh no it's not about money just to be able to put them in a legal situation where where maybe you can't mention him they can't talk negative about him. They got to watch what they say about him. Yeah. Yeah, I see what Don... He's trying to protect himself going into the, the next uh, election, I guess. I mean... He I said they know. caused him embarrassment, pain, humiliation, and mental anguish. Well, when you compare somebody, when you liken them to Hitler, 
Yeah, that's pretty you know, tough. That's that's. I feel like you think that's high praise. You feel like Trump thinks that's high praise? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, y'all, y'all are crazy. And then look at the it picture. It was an incredible look, time. You see, you see how the you see the pictures they try to use of him? Huh? You see the pictures they try to use of uh <laughs> of Trump? Scroll down, Julia. That would like come on. Oh man. yeah, like that's him a Hitler, dude, put That's that a setup. Got <laughs> the yeah. arm up. Damn. Like, Yo, come on, man. Come on, don't do that. I guess. <laughs> This is gonna be a Hitler vibe. This is this is this is this is gonna be interesting to watch though, because like you said, they might they might be put in a position where they can't you know kill him and defamate his character and all of this shit like they were doing the past few years on. CNN. But this could spark God knows what with with not just CNN, Fox, oh no, Rory, this ABC, is gonna, NBC. Like they, this, no, every news channel does this. Oh to no, everybody. this is just the warm up. This is just the yeah. beginning of this shit. Like this is gonna be like I said, we're living in the simulation. This yeah. is gonna be the craziest next. Two years. Trust me on that one. Uh, Tom Brady and Giselle are getting divorced, Rory. I know I know it pains your heart anytime you see people going through what you went through. <laughs> oh, um, my fucking No, I, I didn't get divorced. Well, yeah, he didn't even get married. Just said she could keep the ring. Yeah, that, that's a divorce. Good settlement. Um, Way better settlement yeah. than what, what, what Tom's, <laughs> Tom's about to go, go through. through. Yes. <laughs> Tom would be like, hey, keep the fucking ring. <laughs> Tom's keep all of my up. rings. Yeah. Giselle's worth more. Did Tom Brady? No. Really? Pretty sure. Well, I don't. I don't know about after this. Uh, this contract that he signed once he retires to be a. I know analyst. he took some pay cuts for the Patriots so they could get you know, Randy Moss and shit on the the roster. But mm -hmm. Giselle is worth more than Tom Brady. I believe so. Uh, no wonder Kanye's in Paris going fucking nuts. The fashion world is worth this much money. <laughs> oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, so she's up four hundred M's. Jesus, while Christ. he's up two hundred fifty, so he might come out of this on top. I know this is the wrong room to explain this to me. That's why I want this room to explain this to me. Why would a model be worth four hundred million? Like, how do you make? I'm, I know it's going to sound like I'm shitting. I'm not, but I know. we had an amazing how, episode with a model that could have broke all of this oh down for us, but, and it was lost. I and know because I, I did ask her was, how was was completely lost. But is it all in advertising? Like, has Giselle done that many campaigns recently that she's worth four hundred million? I don't know what the, the the deals or the contracts look like. She must have her own. Line of skincare and products. Got you. As well. Okay. I would yeah, assume. she has. She she has businesses. I'm sure. No, I'm I'm purposely ignorant in this. I want to know that 400 million is crazy. Yeah, it's not just modeling. <laughs> she's a she's a she's a name. She's a brand. Yeah. Got you. All right. Well. Well, Damn, Tom, Tom needs to get with uh with Levi's a, now that Brett Favre is out of here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> he, could, he could fill those jeans. <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> Tell it, Tom Brady could fill those. Fill Brett Favre's jeans. <laughs> um. Aaron Judge hit home run number 62 Woo! in Texas. Yeah. Um, again, shout out to Aaron Judge. Again, easily one of the greatest seasons any Yankee has ever had. Um, pay him. They're gonna have to give him about five. They're gonna have to give him what pay his Giselle ass. and Giselle Tom money. Brady's worth. Yeah. <laughs> He's gonna have to get Giselle's uh, net worth and fucking Brady's net worth Word. in order to stay in the Bronx. But I think whatever he wants, I think they'll pay him. They'll give yeah, it to I him. think you have to him. keep you have to keep Aaron Judge in the Bronx. Yeah, uh, hopefully again they could cap this season with uh, another World Series. I mean, I hope so too. We'll see. We'll see. I'm gonna try to catch a uh, catch some uh, playoff games this year. I haven't been to uh, any playoff games in a new state. I've been to some games, but not any playoff games in a new stadium. So I'm gonna try to catch one this Brokey. year. <laughs> uh, tour. We're still on the road, Rory. I know we're home mm -hmm. for uh, a month. <clears throat> yes, yeah, so don't get too comfortable. Keep your tall legs bloke. under you. Oh no, we in tall the streets. Uh, London Earth Theater, November fifth. Woo! I'm looking forward to that. I can't lie to y'all. I am too. And we we have uh, London, and then we have Atlanta, and in between, I believe we have the Drake show at the Apollo. Hey, yeah, we're going. We're going, right? Are we getting think, that interview? Do you think we'll be invited? Ovio Mall. Oh, um, I. No, Sirius is putting that shit together. They've invited Maul and I to every uh, Apollo show. If they don't invite us to the Drake one, then we have some real beef with Sirius. What if yeah. Drake specifically said, don't invite? That's well, that's, no, that's what I think would happen. He'll, that's no why way. I'm asking Maul if we're welcome. He'd say only if Rory brings his Chardonnay or some shit like that. Yeah, he, <sighs> he, he has wine shamed me before. Chardonnay. <laughs> <laughs> How you telling a man to bring Chardonnay to your concert? Didn't he say you did a Dork. toast and no one had their glass up? Yes, he did, which was <laughs> which was not true. I've been around when that has happened before. Though. Like if somebody toasts us like to an empty air, I'm like, Ooh. yeah, nobody likes that guy. <laughs> I'm not toasting with you. It was a live. What, what am I the toast guy? 
that's why that's that's why that's that's funnier funnier. yeah that's why that's funnier and i and i hit him afterwards because he had he had said it was pinot or something i was like first of all savion blanc sir Mm -hmm. get your facts straight oh that you (laughs) you should have showed him you didn't you you didn't do your googles (laughs) you would know that i'm not even a fucking chardonnay guy and i think he replied back and said i'm observant (laughs) oh god (laughs) is this via dms or text uh this was dm i want to say That's Gosh. hilarious, but yeah, I don't. That know. actually I is guess. a very hilarious DM back and forth after he had claimed I toasted with with no one around. That's that's some funny shit. Uh, but yeah, I don't Drake know. Is funny. I guess we can go to try to go to the Apollo for that. I just don't. I, I, what is the play on it though? Is this just like a a, a concert for serious? Like what they did with the her? Yeah, the her no, show? See, it's the exact same series. Yeah. Okay, all right. Because I was about to they say did that. her. They did a. Uh, was it Mary J? They did something with the locks came out, I feel like. Mm. But yeah, they've been doing this Apollo series for a little bit. It's it's dope. Yeah. I think the Drake one's gonna be crazy. Should be a good night. Well, Drake at the Apollo, that's fire. And that has to be on high on his list of accomplishments as well. Every artist yeah, wants to Apollo. play the Apollo Theater. And November eleventh, I still don't know the significance. I just know I'm so far gone there's November eleventh. Yeah. He never really said what happened that day. You know, he must have got some fire pussy in Houston. You know what that happened day. to the, that one day on that one in that one place. You know that's how Drake rap. Mm-hmm. I'll never forget that one night in that one place. And all the girls the, be like, oh, t- right? Talking about it could me. Be me. <laughs> he could just never let that. Night oh no, it was go. November eighteenth, not eleventh. Never mind. Oop. All right, yeah, we're, so it's just a week date. early. Um, When's the last time Drake did a venue this small? Fifteen hundred people. Uh, his backyard, shit. like a bar mitzvah. Uh, probably his backyard. There was more than fifteen hundred people in there. I don't know. It definitely was. <laughs> it definitely was. I don't know. Maybe Highline Ballroom. You think he'll pack it out? <laughs> <laughs> I think there'll be a big walk up. Yeah, it's gonna be amazing. I'll have to, yeah, day have to think about walk up. Hey Drake, don't worry. I promise you, walk up day tickets are sold out, guaranteed. And like, I mean, listen, I'll do. I'll post it on my IG. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try help. to help. I'll try to help. I'll help push I the numbers for you, Drake. Yeah. We'll post it every week. Don't worry about it. We'll make sure. You, you know, I'll text, text, a few, text a few influencers in the city. Yeah. I got a few promoter friends that might be able to help out. Yeah. Um, you think he's there to do the hits or like the B-side records? I want to hear the B-sides. And the I Apollo? would hope so. And as, much, as much as I like the newest album, I don't want to hear that album in the Apollo. Oh my God, neither do I. Which one? Oh, <laughs> I don't hear it. Yeah. And I, I like that album. Don't play that fucking album in the Apollo. No, nah, he got to get into it. He got to get into it. got to get one of them on. The legendary, like the B-side. He got to get into mixtape shit. Yeah. He got it so far gone. You got to get so. into that. You got to get into that. All right. All right, man. Well, we'll be back uh, next week. Uh, you guys enjoy your weekends. Be safe. Rory, got anything going on this weekend? No. Ah, it doesn't matter. We never do. No, of course not. <laughs> sorry, uh, sorry for a newsy episode. We just did so many interviews and all There's so much shit, shit going on we that missed. we missed out on. We had to try to catch up. Uh, the killers of P&B Rock have been caught. Uh, s- s- crazy, insane fucking what? story. Was the father caught? The father, everyone was caught. All right, good. The the son is a, the alleged gunman, seventeen years old. The father was the alleged getaway driver, and I believe the mother is being held as an accomplice or after to like I don't know some shit. I believe they used the mother to get to the father. I it's, think so it's, too. It's a game of chess at that mm-hmm. point. Um, but yeah, it's just sad, sad story, tragedy. Uh, seventeen year old kid whose life is pretty much over. It's, it's being reported that he had an ankle monitor on his brace on his ankle. When he uh, when he uh, killed PMB Rock, so he was already, you know, going through some legal situations. Wait, he was just hold on. Yeah, it's crazy, sick fucking story, man. It's uh, it's sad, you know. What, he thought he was gonna get away with it. I don't, Rory, I don't know, man. You know these people that <laughs> crazy. I get it. I, I get it. We all have you know unfortunate situations, circumstances. You know, no money. You know, can't take. But this is not. This is not the way. Seventeen years old. You killing somebody over jewelry, you know what? This is this is sad. It's fucked up. It, and outside of that situation, that's some cowardly ass father shit out of the obvious. That's what I'm. But you sending your son in to do it's that? It's a whole. That shit? That's what I'm saying. You the pussy. whole, just the whole cycle, the whole circle of it is is such a tragedy. It's not right already, but if you are gonna do that shit, go do it yourself, pussy. You gonna send your yeah. your seventeen year old son in to do it? <sighs> yeah, man, it's fucked up. It's fucked up. So. I'm glad that they they caught the uh the people behind the killing though. And hopefully this uh you know brings some type of relief and 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 peace to the family. Cause at this point that's all it's really about. Yeah. Um but we'll be back 
next week, y'all enjoy y'all weekend. Be safe. Have fun. It's getting cold in New York. I think we got like two days left of 70, mm -hmm. 72, 73 before it drops back down to 52. It's lit. Enjoy it. Uh, get out there this weekend. Have a good time. I'm that nigga. He's just ginger. Y'all be good. Peace. No, Warrior.